We're live at the T5S2 pod 13 finals for season seven. This is an exciting matchup uh, that I'm pumped to watch play out because over here in the red, we do have the illimitable Prospero playing his Azure Yanni versus over here in the blue, uh, I think a hopefully a, a channel favorite because we do have some wild Tyranid builds coming out of the woodwork here on the blue side of the table. It is C-Mob playing Tyranids. How's it going, everybody? Happy Monday. Hope everybody is psyched for some sick Warhammer 40,000 action to happen because uh, this this do be a spicy matchup, everybody. Thanks for coming and hanging out. We got a prediction going on already. Three thousand points in on Azure Yanni. Hell yeah! So players just going through their deployments. They just finished pre games. We can talk real quick about the uh, lists that they are playing because they <laughs> there's some spice, chat. It's a big spice. Uh, we'll talk about Zex or excuse me, Prosperos. Azure Yanni. We are running Hail of Doom today. So six is to hit with Shuriken weapons will automatically wound and count as a six to wound to automatically apply the rending effect of plus two AP on those weapons. This is a uh, a little bit of a blast from the past build here. Uh, when the Codex was first released, we had a ton of Hail of Doom in the metagame that was super duper uh, oppressive. I don't want to say entirely oppressive, but it was very good. It was extremely successful. Uh, that, it was nerfed a couple times. They had to uh, tone it down quite a bit. And uh, once they did, we saw a lot less of it, and uh, as your Yanni moved to playing a lot of Yanari builds, a lot of uh, Craft World Elfway builds, but now they're back uh, in this new format where we're trying to deal with you know all these high model count opponents, things like um, Astra Militarum. These Hail of Doom builds are bringing a ton of sort of mid strength, but then high AP shooting which clears through light infantry very easily, even just with the raw attacks, and then getting rending attacks with, died and goon, <laughs> with goon and died. Uh, with guide and doom uh, is able to clear through even heavily armored enemies like dark angels. They actually have a very, very good uh, brace of matchups into the meta. And are one of the, that's why they're one of the strongest uh, factions right now. If you don't see any other the, uh, any of the other strong factions doing well, as your Yanni are almost always uh, around the top of an event. So uh, we have in this list uh, a Seer Council, uh, just a single Seer with Sunstorm, the objective secured jet bike, uh, Behareth, and a Foot Farseer. We then have a Farseer Skyrunner with the Kurnos Bow, Mark of the Incomparable Hunter combo to do mortal wounds uh, on hit or wound rolls of six. Uh, yeah, these guys are infantry. Because uh, any wound roll of six then deals additional mortal wounds thanks to the Mark of the Incomparable Hunter. Kurnos Bow with a successful wound does a mortal wound automatically. So you could potentially be knocking four mortal wounds out of this model a uh three units of 10 dire avengers all in on the big dire avenger bricks and we do have two in strategic reserve so they're going to be coming in off the table edge one is in webway strike so they're going to be deep striking uh the old-fashioned way just nine inches outside of enemy models we then have another foot warlock three shining spears with the paragon saber heart strike combo so full rerolls on the exarch itself uh who's the one in the back he then does mortal wounds and wound rolls of five plus uh, with that heart strike. And you do get a bunch of rerolls to try to fish for those. We then have two vipers. Interestingly, just with scatter lasers, oftentimes we see the shuriken cannon builds on the vipers to take advantage of that hail of doom. But the scatter lasers are doing fine right now. Uh, keeps them extremely cheap. They are 40 points a model. So you can score secondaries with them. And we are seeing behind enemy lines on Prospero's side of the table already. So we're going to be watching these little units, things like wind riders, just run into the opponent's deployment zone and score very easily. We then have three units of nine Wind Riders. This list is all in on the Hail of Doom. So 30 Dire Avengers, 27 Wind Riders, uh, all of them with twin Shuriken Catapults. So no Shuriken Cannons today. It's all mass one damage shooting. So that gives us a grand total of uh, 57 Shuriken Catapults in those six units alone. Um, in order to answer that Astro Militarum matchup and even a little bit of Space Marines right now, because Astro Militarum is so impressive in the meta, uh, uh, most other armies have been reduced to taking um, indirect fire in order to counter them. So we see Space Marines playing Desolation Root squads, which are uh, actually very dangerous against Eldari as well. And the Astro Militarum themselves taking Mortar teams as well as the Barbican's Key Kazrakan combo. 
which you have to deal with with indirect fire before it shoots you. If it shoots you, it will uh, usually do trade in up enough damage that it's difficult to come back in the game. But these Night Spinners are able to kill that unit before it gets to activate. They can also kill the opposing, ind the opposing indirect fire, and they even have a good profile at shooting into Space Marine profiles, uh, especially Space Marines that don't have any nearby Apothecaries, because they are AP2-2 damage, so if that Space Marine's not in cover, it's saving on a 4, and every converted attack kills a, one of those uh, expensive 40-point Desolators. Uh, 45 points, in fact, right? Uh, no, not quite. 35 points? 35 points. Is that right? That doesn't sound right. I think they're 40. No, they're definitely 35. I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> anyway, chat. That is what we got going on in this Eldar list. Uh, it is... A lot of times we see Eldar as these very classic sort of technical builds where you have like double Howling Banshees, uh, a couple of these MSU units, a couple units of Rangers in there. Uh, we do have one unit of Rangers. I don't know if I mentioned for uh, pregame screening, but we'll take two or three units of Rangers, maybe one one X Striking Scorpions, two X Banshees, uh, you know, a three X five Dire Avengers, maybe for for secondary play. Um, and we'll play try to play this very finesse technical uh, game plan. That is not the case for Prospero's <laughs> as Yani here. This Hail of Doom build is just rocking as many Shuriken and catapults as it possibly can and i guess i when i counted all the shuriken catapults i didn't really take into account the fact that the wind riders actually have two so that that's 54 plus 30 dire avengers and the dire avengers have two in the x as well so that's 54 plus 33 87 shuriken catapults chat amongst those units 87 are you kidding me oh my god we're going all in but uh, the question here of the day is, is can the El uh, the Tyranids survive this Eldari onslaught? This horde mode mass Eldari. Let's talk about the Tyranid list. Uh, now, Seamob is known for his absolute off-the-wall uh, wild Tyranid lists, and uh, this is what he played in the Season 6 Invitational, uh, beating a Tyranid mirror match in the playoffs post Arcs of Omen update for Tyranids when they were very bad. Um, Indis he and Indicius Magpie both played... Uh, Tyranids in an epic showdown. Indicius elected to play uh, uh, Behemoth, Carnifex, Screamer Killer Spam, but ended up getting uh, uh, kind of demolished <laughs> by this style of this style of Tyranids, which is very off the wall. So we are in a custom high fleet today. We are using the infinite biomorphologies mechanic for Tyranids to choose two adaptive traits to build your own high fleet trait instead of uh, getting a core high fleet trait and one adaptive trait that you choose. Uh, we are using that to take heightened reflexes uh, as well as territorial instincts. Heightened reflexes allow these models to fall back and shoot, which is a huge deal for both the Pyrovores and the Exocrine. The Exocrine is famous for its inability to do anything in melee. It does have three like AP 1-2 damage attacks. Who cares? Not that exciting. Uh, it does have an incredibly powerful range attack. D3 plus 6 shots, AP 4, uh, strength 8, AP 4, 3 flat damage. Ignoring cover situationally uh, and potentially exploding sixes as well. And the downside is that it is blast. So the Exocrine cannot fire it in melee. So getting in your Exocrine engaged, if you don't have enough psychic powers to remove the engaging units, then uh, it just does nothing for the rest of the turn. It just sits there. Um, but having that heightened reflexes means you can take multiple Exocrines and you can, uh, you, you don't run the risk of getting them neutralized by being engaged. We also have three units of Pyrovores, and the same goes for the Pyrovores as well. The Pyrovores are a little bit scarier in close combat. They do have several attacks apiece. Um, three attacks each at, at uh, Strength 6 AP 3, which is pretty solid. They're, they're carrying a Power Sword around. But you would rather be shooting with their Flamer. They're either D6, 2 damage, or 2D6, 1 damage Flamer profile, which you can then do with the fallback and shoot. The other one we're taking is Territorial Instincts, which is going to give all of the monsters in this army objective secured. Uh, and because they are all above 10 wounds, they are also all going to be counting as 5 models. So despite the fact that we are taking full advantage of Arcs of Omen's uh, newfound ability to leave troops at home, all of these monsters are going to be um, incredibly strong at holding down objectives. Now, in the list, we are taking three Neurothropes, a build after my own heart. Neurothropes, uh, one of the, the strongest psychers in the game, for sure, uh, and one of the more powerful characters. We uh, have one with the Resonance Bar for plus one to cast and Synaptic Tendrils for an additional activation of Warp Siphon, which allows a unit to roll 3d6 to cast a spell and drop the lowest, alongside uh, Alien Cunning on the second Neurothrope, giving it objective secured. 
we have a so it's an, another objective security count as five model uh, model. So despite the fact that we are low model count in this list, there is a ton of obsec. We then have a winged hive tyrant, a little bit of a blast from the past. No tyrant guard to protect him, so we do see that Seamob is playing him extremely cagey, and um, we're gonna see if. Uh, he can he can get some work done now. Obviously, the Wings Hive Tyrant, he, previously a very strong profile. What is uh, going on over here? These Pyrovores have colliders. <laughs> Wild. Um, yeah, <laughs> their tails. <laughs> That's wild. It's a pretty non-standard Pyrovore model, I think. Um, the Wing Hive Tyrant not no longer able to overrun means it, it basically it's a one trick. Well, one hit wonder. It's going to go and blow something up, and then it's going to be dead, most likely. But that one thing it blows up is going to super duper die. This guy is rocking Mock Claws of Thyrax for full rerolls to wound, as well as adaptive biology for a 5 plus damage ignore built in. And then moving on to the elite slot, this is our compulsory slot for the Arx Bowman detachment because we're bringing six entries, three units of Pyrovores, two of three and one of two, alongside three Maliceptors. This is another unit that's a bit of a blast from the past. We haven't seen really them since, um, I want to say, like, uh, almost a year ago now uh, when Maliceptors were released at their full their full level of power in the 9th edition Tyranid Codex. Uh, now, so now significantly debuffed, but they can still do a lot of damage. They have a solid melee profile, especially uh, if you are able to get around the fact that they only have three attacks. But they also deal a ton of damage in the Psychic Phase. Uh, if they cast a spell above four, or above seven, excuse me, warp charge, then uh, they will get three mortal wounds applied to the closest enemy within 12. Regardless of line of sight, so you're able to deal damage through buildings with it. You can kill yourself out of melee and then charge with it. Uh, and on top of that, they're one of the tankiest profiles in the Tyranny Codex. Toughness 8 with a 4 plus built in and vulnerable save is extremely tanky. Now, the way to get around that is a high volume of low AP shooting. Uh, which is exactly what this Eldar army has, especially with the auto wounds it has to get around the um, high toughness value. So any of these hits or any of these uh, shots that do not automatically wound are going to have a little bit of trouble getting through that toughness eight because this Eldar army is almost entirely strength four. But we do have that that uh, hit roll of six auto wounding from Hail of Doom to help get around that. So I guess it's really a big question of how many sixes uh, Prospero can roll. And I think that given the number of dice that he's rolling, he could probably roll a lot. But if he doesn't, these Maliceptors will ruin some Eldar days, especially with the amount of raw damage that they pile in onto these multi-wound biker units. Uh, and then last but certainly not least, two Exocrines in the heavy support slot, one with Voracious Ammunition to do mortal wounds after it shoots, and one with Dermic Symbiosis to give it an invulnerable save. One of them is... Uh, in strategic reserve right now alongside a unit of pyrovores we do have to worry a little bit about forewarned the auspex scan available for eldar but um otherwise they will not be uh they, they, they'll be able to respond to the uh, the dire avengers coming off the stable edge now i know that uh prospero is renowned for his very aggressive play with his farseer so he may be able to Strategic Reserve models in on areas where his Dire Avengers are sitting. So if they do get counterattacked by Pyrovores, they will be able to respond. But we'll just have to see how the game plays out. It's going to be an interesting one, chat. I do think uh, Eldar certainly have the advantage here just in terms of their power level. But um, I, these Pyrovores are definitely going to help if Seamob can keep them alive. And the amount of objective secured that Seamob has is enormous in this matchup. There's literally, I think, five objective secured models or six objective secured models. Seven, I guess, for the Eldar. Uh, Behareth is innately objective secured. The Sunstorm um, Warlock Skyrunner is objective secured. And then these five Rangers, whereas we have mass objective secured on the other side of the table. So it's going to be a real question of whether or not Prospero can kill Seamob off of these all these uh, side objectives. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Uh, and with that chat, it looks like the deployment step is just about wrapping up. We'll see who takes the first turn here. I think I already colored you guys. You guys are orange. Made you teal. Made you teal. And then you are green. I think that should be every model. Let me know if there's any that aren't colored for you. I don't need dark first. Okay. Um... 
Poop part. That should be a remodel. Oh, it's good to me. Techniques. I think we roll a target vendor, yes? Or not target vendor. Uh, go first, go second. Blammo! I roll a three. Maybe your Farseer Skyrunner is not covered. Ah, she was hiding in their midst. Um, you got a three. Okay, here's my roll. It's a four, and you go first. Uh, do you have any pre-battle abilities? I got nothing. I have a potential redeploy, and then the Fate Dice. I will do the Fate Dice first. Boom, boom. We get a hit and a power, and we roll two of them. We'll re-roll. I guess I don't really need any charges, but... Uh, or advances, but we'll re-roll these two, just for some variety's sake. And end up with two hit rolls, a power, and I guess a charge. Why not? I can use it, but might as well have it. And I could redeploy. I don't think I do. So, yeah. It's over to you, my friend. I, oh, I need to start this timer. Okay, good time to me. You are the blue player. Goes to you. Start game. Um, all right, first turn. So we do have C-Mob taking turn one here. Now, I, I actually do think that this is probably a, a little unfortunate. The the Eldar Alpha Strike is extremely powerful, especially because uh, Prospero has deployed extremely conservatively. He could use Phantasm to redeploy aggressively and then move very far uh, forward. Yeah. But aggressive play against really this, uh, this Tyranid army is liable to be punished. Uh, the downside for C-Mob is that it forces him to move into line of sight in order to score these objectives right now. He doesn't have, he's not maneuverable enough to be able to hide and score the objectives and the Eldar can, can maneuver around the terrain very effectively. Um, we have actually watched, I think almost every time Seamup has played a, a similar build to this, he has played on this map. <laughs> Which is a little bit, uh, a little unfortunate for him, I think. There are certainly better maps for uh, this style of Tyranids in the pool this season. Uh, just unfortunate that he's rolled out this one. But clearly the other ones have worked out for him, being 3-0 in the event so far. Uh, what this will allow CMOB to do is get his defensive auras active from the start of the first turn. Now, I don't know if that matters too much here. Um, the Maliceptors can broadcast a 6-inch aura of minus 1 strength for enemy ranged attacks. It can save you from scatter lasers a little bit. Um, and I think protect the Hive Tyrant. That's most likely what we're going to see, because the Hive Tyrant could potentially be hit by the Night Spinners at Strength 7, winning them on 4s, and reducing that to Strength 6 would mean they would win them on 5s, which is much, much more reasonable. Uh, we can also, we'll also cast Catalyst on whatever the most dangerous thing is for the Eldar army to make it as difficult as it is as possible to kill. Uh, now, the other benefit of going first here. Uh, is that C-Mob does get to drop his reinforcements before uh, Prospero does, which means he won't... He, he has more of a control over the reinforcement step than the Eldari do. Uh, he also has... He'll only give his opponent one turn to respond to those reinforcements coming in. So uh, either Prospero eats the shooting from that Exocrine, which, to be honest, is uh, one of the most the most terrifying models in the game, I think, to shoot at Eldar profiles. Especially these Eldar bikers. It is almost perfectly statted to kill them very cleanly. It wounds them on twos because they're only toughness four, and it entirely bypasses their armor save uh, and kills them on each converted attack. So... Prospero is going to either have to screen extremely aggressively right now in order to prevent this hit or pull the bikers back into defensive positions. And either one of those, I think, benefits uh, C-Mob pretty well here. Um, so that is good. Otherwise, uh, Prospero could just, you know, sort of set up his his forewarned positions and uh, bring, maybe bring in some reserves before C-Mob brought in his own reserves and uh, kind of be able to um, counterpunch effectively, but that's not really going to happen here. The downside, obviously, is that the Eldari are going to have bottom round 5 scoring, so unless the Tyranids can basically table Prospero, he's going to have a 12-point primary turn uh, being represented at the end of the game, which uh, C-Mob's going to have a real tough time doing. He as, as much damage as he could possibly do to the Eldar army, uh, it is unlikely that he'll do crippling damage to it over the course of this game. Uh, now, taking a look at our secondaries quickly here. Uh, uh, Azuriani taking Bring It Down, which I think is a bit of a no-brainer against Tyranids. 
Uh, especially this build of Tyranids, because it gives up a potential 17 points on Bring It Down. We also have Scout the Enemy, uh, required to do an action in No Man's Land between the two players' objectives, uh, between the two players' deployment zones, which you'll be able to do very easily with these Rangers back here. The Rangers do complete it in one turn, um, and that just gives him a very consistent secondary. If he does get into his opponent's deployment zone and perform it, uh, he's going to get additional points for that, but it's most likely a 10 or a 12, maybe. Pretty consistently. And you don't even have to push forward with banners, which uh, this list is not very good at scoring anyway, because it doesn't have many infantry on the table to begin with. Uh, and then uh, behind enemy lines, last but not least, which is extremely good for these very fast biker units. Uh, over here for C-Mob, uh, these uh, secondary is a little bit, a little bit more aggressive. We are running... No prisoners, which the Eldar army does give up in spades, but you do have to be able to kill them, which is going to be a little bit tough. We're going to see if we can get a Malice Scepter in to Psychic Overload on this Viper. Looks like it's going to be a little bit difficult. Uh, I do appreciate the placement that Prospero has. He knows that his Night Spinner is not in danger currently from the Tyranid shooting. And... Um... It's basically one of the most efficient points per wound in his army. So he, and given that the Tyranids, without direct fire shooting, are unlikely to kill it, they can maybe bracket it with the psychic powers and the indirect, you know, mortal wounds output, but they're not going to destroy it, which means the Press Row is fine, which is taking some damage on that guy. Looks like we weren't quite able to get into psychic overload range of the Viper here. And the Viper's here for the same reason. If, if uh, CMOB just blitzes a advance roll here and gets right up into the Eldar face. You don't want to be taking those mortal wounds on bikers because those bikers are expensive and represent most of your damage. The vipers are just basically free free wounds here. Looks like the Neurothrope is going to be moving up to the center to get uh, Warp Ritual this turn. This is extremely aggressive. But given the fact that the Eldar have a lot of denies from all their Farseers, you do kind of want to be rolling out your um, warp Ritual as quickly as possible because uh, doing so gives you the best opportunity to um, uh, fight through some denies. With the positioning of this building too, you can also force the Eldar player to move really far forward in order to shoot you. You can be character protected from this back corner here which basically requires that an enemy unit be like over on this side of the ruin to shoot you. Which is pretty far for the bikes to go. Yeah, I think I do. It looks unlikely that he's going to get hit by too much. Maybe just a couple of scatter laser shots or something. Ooh, and here comes the hive tyrant. Yeah, again, the hive tyrant wants to be pushing forward as well. That is a unit that you have to worry about the night spinner shooting at, so you don't want to be sitting it quite in the back. Um, it, it will be unfortunate if it gets hit by the wind riders, and it looks like there might be some avenues they could attack from this side of this wall over here. But again, they'd have to push way way out of their comfort zone to do it. CMOB knows he's going to have to take this hit on the chin, and he's he's basically just putting himself in a position where he could potentially counter punch and kill any Eldar unit that shoots at him. Let's see this other mouse scepter. So advance the mouse up there next to the parents. Four. Uh, so we get twelve. Right. So the farthest we could go would be like. Lapscallion, happy Jesus respawn day. <laughs> happy Jesus respawn day. We were running an event yesterday at a local game store and uh, commenting that the, you know, well, you know, not as many people showed up as we were expecting, which is unfortunate, but like we still had a good time and everything was fine. And then we realized halfway through that, like, well, actually it's a national holiday. So <laughs> uh, as a pretty non-religious person, I had totally forgotten. Mm. 
Okay, I think I do push him towards the middle, so he'll be here. We'll touch this dent. So screening the Neurothrope with the Maliceptor. That's aggressive. But I think that uh, the downside here for Seamob is that he needs to... He's he's going to have to eat a shot from something and then have it fire and fade into an awkward position. He needs to set up his Exocrine in a position. And I guess the, the Exocrine's far enough away from a lot of these Wind Riders that it might be able to kind of be in an aggressive position an aggressive position, but not in, entirely in danger. Right, uh, he needs to be able to put that uh, Exocrine somewhere super far forward where it can shoot at a Windrider squad as soon as the Windrider squad shoots at him without it being able to escape. Really happy, Important to have your Malice Efforts be happy. Club plays out of a church. <laughs> oh, that's unfortunate. I used to run a club out of a church, actually. Uh, or not so much a club. I used to run regular um, events out of a church. Um, which was a like, great fun, to be honest. But, uh... Um, so we're going to raise the banner with the firewood in the back. Yeah, yeah, sometimes you would lose access on certain weekends or whatever when things were... Big things were happening. Which is fine. They didn't charge us to use it, so... We were a community program, so that was, uh... That was pretty useful. Yeah, I guess it depends on how many wounds Jesus is. He took, like, at least five in the crucifixion, so he's probably five wounds. That's a pretty big reanimation roll. Maybe he's just used resurrection protocols, though, for one CP, and he rolled his four plus. No, I don't feel able to shoot those guys. Um, but I can just... Yeah. Um, okay. I think I'm going to threaten this objective a little bit. So we'll go ten to here. He just spends blood tithe points? Oh my god. Yeah, so Seamop here it looks like is uh, just adopting the philosophy of the full send. Which I think, I mean, Arcs of Omen has ended up feeling like one of the most aggressive formats because I think there are, despite how much the game has, you know, improved, there are still a lot of these, like, you know, pretty, pretty not great matchups and especially alpha striking matchups. And this is, that's one thing that this Eldar list can do a lot of times where it can just, uh, going first or going second, it can force you out in the open and then just hammer you with uh, an unending fusillade of shuriken fire. A literal hail of doom, you know, if, you, if it were. As it, as it were. Uh, and one thing that, one way you can try to, to deal with those armies is, is put yourself in a position where if you can absorb the alpha strike, lose a bunch of stuff, but as long as you can cripple your opponent back and you win the game. And I think that's what he's going to try and do. He's, he's going to hope that his opponent can't kill more than maybe one Maliceptor and a couple Pyrovores. And in doing so, give him Exocrine shots, give him another Maliceptor follow-up, and give him a good activation from the Winged Hive Tyrant. And if he can get all of those things, he can potentially do enough damage that he he fights through the center. I think this is the right call from Seamop, to be honest. And again, I think he would have preferred to see this. Well, I don't know. I, I don't know if I'm ready to say that he would have preferred to see this uh, <laughs> as the second player because the, the the board state would not look similar as the second player. Uh, we would see a a very quick redeployment from uh, Prospero into a much more aggr aggressive position, and he would probably pick up one of these one of these Maliceptors, I think. Um, so, uh, Seamob may be happy that he's going first here. Uh, okay. That is my movement. Very defensive Maliceptor in the back. Love to see that one push forward as well. Um, alright, we'll start with the warp ritual in the middle. Hit me with that magic, baby. <laughs> Here's a 9 plus 1 is 10. Sounds good. I guess I will check what I can deny. Is that guy? Not that guy. Yes, that guy. Theoretically, the Hive Tyrant. So sure. The Parthir over here. So if I can do it. Nope, the Parthir will try it. Play well. Good to go. Okay, so it goes off. Get my three points. One, two, three. Um, 
Alright, and then, so yeah. I could stream with this guy, maybe. Okay, um, this guy. Don't saw it. Let's just go, we'll go to the nerd in the back, we'll do a catalyst. Cool. Um, and he should have warp second. Yeah, there it is. It goes up. Five warp eight. siphons to place every turn here in chat. Uh, no, probably this is probably the, the 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 heaviest psychic army that the game exists in the game right now. Yeah. Like thousand suns yeah. uh, yeah. can eat their hearts out. Cool. These these Tyranids will give them an absolute run for their money. Um, and then any narrow parasite targets? I don't think so. So he's done. Um, perhaps he's on. Let's see if I can get anything in my list. No. With lictors with extra jammy bits, Spark Joy. Yeah, those models are insane. Um, all right, so I just have the Von Ryan's Leapers. Oh my god. I was like trying to decide whether or not I was like excited about buying into more Tyranids, and then those models got previewed, and I'm like, well, I guess I am. <laughs> well, do a great job denying. That's nice. Um, and I think that's it. Um, shooting, I guess. It looks like I might be able to pop a couple of shots on your balcony or whatever this thing is. Yeah. It's like one guy can shoot this. Far away? So, yeah, just one of the, one guy with the little shots. Little shot me, baby. Number of shots is five. And strength four, so wounding of five. Not too bad. AP1. AP1, these are four up saves. Also, not too bad. Take the damage. Mm -hmm. Takes one. Take that, Wait, Knight that Spinner. Shooting. Should be the end of the turn. Uh, no All right. And Wait. here's the moment of truth for C Mob. Can he absorb the Alpha Strike here? Because uh, Prospero is going to come in hard and come in fast and try to kill as many models as we can. We do have the Pyrobor sitting on the objective. They are obnoxiously strength. Our toughness five five wounds. They're a two plus save currently in cover, which uh, the as your Yanni do have to worry about. Unless they have a reveal, I guess, in their list, but I'm not sure that they do. Uh, and they may not be willing to cast it. Um, they do not. They have a quicken. And they have a protect, but they don't have a conceal reveal. So yeah, they're gonna just have to just eat the cover. The Maliceptor over here is on its uh, catalyst. I, t I missed it, but I imagine that we dropped our uh, encephalic diffusion with the Maliceptor in the back. I'm here, maybe. In order to protect so that high tyrant. Some night spinners doing their shooting before they die. Uh, so you can pop over here and shoot. I guess you might as well get some distance. Aggressive night spinner. You can pop your 16, do a similar deal. So I think a similar thing's going to happen here where really the, the Exocrines, I, I talked up the Exocrines quite a bit. They have an ex, an incredibly effective profile at shooting at Eldar Bikers. Uh, they also have a very good profile at shooting into Night Spinners. Um, four converted attacks from them just automatically kills a Night Spinner. Uh, and they only need threes to wound. So there's a very good chance that a, an Exocrine just straight up destroys a Night Spinner on the shot. So, but at the on the flip side, there's only two Exocrines. And... Uh, 
Prospero has has more units than realistically the Exocrine can kill by themselves over the course of the game. Um, so Prospero is okay as long as he he's absorbing those hits on units that he doesn't care about so much. I think he's, he does, he's not as worried about these Night Spinners as he is his biker units for sure. Um, as long as he absorbs those hits, he's he's going to be fine with it. Ranger's pushing up to grab objective two. Now we have to deal with those pyrovores. The pyrovores are just going to eat the rangers for breakfast if they end up uh, surviving there. Uh, and we'll just do a little stringy backy. Oops, no, we don't do that. Stringy backy. Oh, I will copy an extra grim just to have on file. I don't think an extra grim is going to hang out over here. Okay. Goodbye, Rangers. You did a great job. And then we can get a Orlock Skyrunner who can drive out his 20 inches over to here. He just needs to be more than six inches away from the edge. That's great. And he wants a friend within three inches of him. This guy right here. Uh, and he will do a scout the enemy. Watch out, there's enemies over there. I think there's an action <laughs> thing. Okay. I wonder what gave the Tyranids away. So he, okay, so he just has to survive, basically, and then it finishes me? Yes, he has to survive, that's right. Okay. He's got him. Uh, and then it's party time for other guys. Having spears could go this direction, it doesn't suck. It, it sucks so little that we'll probably do it. So they don't get blown up by mortals, which they would otherwise do. And that would be sad. 15 inches. Is that with a 5 inch charge or a 6 inch charge? Uh, and then 5 tyrants heroic normally, correct? Yeah, just 3 inches. Yeah. Sounds good. And I don't believe he flies. That shouldn't be too bad over there. Bahara uh, can go 14. So going in with the Shining Spears, probably looking for the kill on the Neurothropes. With the Heart Strike Saber. This guy with his 22 is not really going anywhere special. Could try this charge, that would be kind of interesting. Uh, but I do like him absorbing mortals. That doesn't suck. I have a sneaking uh, suspicion these uh, shining spheres think. might be absorbing some mortals is coming to kill someone, and then we'll return fire on them, so to speak. Drop them there. I guess that's fine. inches is to right here. Meh. I'm back, by the way. Welcome back. Care much about this warlock. Screening wise, I don't think I care. That I guess I should move some dead bikes out of this region. Five tyrant's gonna do what a five tyrant's gonna do. He's got 17. I think this could be blocked off. Yep. Could advance in charge with the spell. He sure could. Because he's such a speedy boy. We'll grab these guys. Not two. We go 22. Plenty of movement to blend over here. Mm -hmm. I want to be able to see that Malceptor. Your 
16 unimpeded. I guess I should get a line. Oh, thank you. I will get the guy out of the way here. If you go in here, 16 unimpeded. See him right here, so I think that's where they're gonna go. So we'll make sure our other guys aren't in that space. Boop, boop, boop. And we can't see. They can see. Let me have this lady. That's her 16. Ooh. I'll double check she can see here. Yeah, good luck leading those. They're always nice and nice and fun. Put a little schnoz over that line. Yeah. yeah. And then we have a horse here here who feels rather abandoned. So she'll probably end up advancing. So she'll go 7 plus 4, 11 inches. 11 inches feels fine over here. We have plenty of dudes. I'll get my inch south of this. Well, I guess actually it doesn't really matter. It's fine. It's kind of irrelevant. Uh, and I guess... You're right, they lost looking back there, but your units are huge. <laughs> At least they're they're not small. They're they're reasonable size. Uh, that's a seven charge. Okay, I think this is pretty much what we're working with. This viper after you guys move seven. Let's turn right there. Uh, this viper could probably close them up a little bit. I guess it's all the same to you. We'll put this guy back here. We have plenty of movement. We made 16 from here. Pretty plenty more special. Um, neat. Yeah, this Viper will come hang out over here. I guess right there. It's okay with me. We're looking anyone. Stuck. So we do need to kind of move the green spot a little bit. I don't do some coochies. I guess I should check what this extra crane is capable of. I don't think it's changed a ton, to be honest, but. I'll see the same. I need to scoot a tiny bit forward. Yeah. So it's really just the this line between these two buildings, which is more or less the same. I don't believe he would be able to touch that building, even with his mightiest move. Yeah, a little unfortunate we didn't see C Mob push a little heavier with that Exocrine. I think I think I would have liked to have seen it maybe peek out a little bit. I'm not sure that Prospero goes for the big the big alpha on it, um, but it does also force back Prospero's uh, his uh, um, deployment. Now, the Exocrine, here. importantly, cannot come in over there. Or it can come in off of the short table edge, but not the long table edge. So it can't come in any farther forward than that. This guy makes it easy. Uh, No. They also oh, only have a 36 inch range. Not quite the. They don't shoot the entire table. Where to put these blue guys? I think we let them do their thing. They get munched. That's the way it goes. Okay. Uh, and everyone else, I think, is pretty comfy. No one can come down over here because that's what Trout Reserves does. And then this is pretty screened. Definitely. So there is the closest they could come down. Okay, let's be able to shoot blue guys and you know some regular old ranger guys. Sounds good. Alright. And then let's do some shooting. Or some psychic, sorry. Oh, I was thinking about using this warlock. He wants to advance. Seven, eight, nine inches. Go two inches to here. Drop him just here for now. 
and then three, four, five. Out here. Five. Does he fly? He does not fly. He has to reach through this wall. He's going to walk along it. Which is why I'm kind of trying to do this really weirdly. I was asking about through the models. Yeah, so he'll walk two inches out to here. That's why he's walking this direction. And then he goes three inches through this wall. Right to here. Was he here? Or where was he? Yeah. He was here. Yep. Just walks right over. To check out. Um, oh, I was just saying, like, between these two, is there space for him to... What are you saying? Probably not. You're right. I mean, you can just move the green ones first. If, uh, yeah, have you moved? This, yeah, this just, just, just go here. There you go. Okay. Uh, but he's going his... I forgot already. Seven, eight, nine. Seven, nine. Which is pretty much here. Uh, I'd love to be an 18 of someone. So I guess he wants to get closer. He's gone. Uh, six. Seven, eight. I don't think he's going to get close enough to be super useful. But he'll still hang up there. To get exploded on by these delightful tanks. <laughs> uh... I guess there's really not much point. I guess he's just hanging out. Okay. Ooh. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. This roller can't cast because he's doing an action, so we'll do some psychic with these ladies. Uh, I guess we'll start with that lady. Ooh. Measure range. You can hit that on by a couple people, but not the minus to cast. Uh, yeah, she's yeah. going to start with Fateful Divergence, which goes off on a 7. Do you want to deny? Um, sure, yes. Um, figure out who it's with in a sec. Uh, no, it's not denied. Me? I will say that was with... Get a CP. Uh, that was with the Neurothrope in the center. Sounds good. Pass it back to me. And that should cast Guide. It goes off on 8, do you want to deny? Uh, yep, we'll try also with the Neurothrope in the center. Uh, it does go off. Sounds good. Guys, these guys right here. Uh, oops, back to me. And then we'll do this farce here. She will attempt. Oh, a... I might, I might see you that. You got okay. an eight, but you're not. Yeah, you're not in range. Um, this one will be, I think. Yeah. Yeah, getting rid of that guide would be huge. It's currently yeah, yeah. allowing the LR to reliably shoot through the dense cover there that all these models are benefiting no, I, from. I will not deny. Good. Yeah. Cool. It's uh, tough, no, though. Here, Guide also, we'll especially, is uh, extremely uh, strong in Halo Doom, obviously, because it gives you more chances to get sixes to, to hit, to nine, generate eight. those automatic wounds. Okay. Uh, we'll try tonight. This will be with uh, Mel, or, I don't know, might be the high turn. Sure. Um, no. That one. Okay, we'll see if you that one. Give it a go. Definitely not. Oh. And she'll doom. Kind of an interesting question whether she dooms Big Boy or Fire Horse. She'll doom Big Boy. And then finally she casts a. I guess a regular old smite. So that was with the high time. So I've got one more with the mouse computer. Uh, smite goes off on a 9, down to an 8. Okay. Uh, what other powers do you have? I. That's your last power. Yeah. Okay. That's, all, and, that's everyone's last power. This guy knows okay. quick and restrained, but he has nothing to cast. We'll just try to deny with that mouse up here. Nope, goes up. Neat. Do some damage. Flammo. Mm, unfortunately, we didn't get a single deny with the Tyranids. But uh, outside of um, the shadow, it's not too I'm bad. We'll do some shooting. Start with some folks that need to shoot first. Uh, we'll shoot this Farseer. She'll shoot the mouse up there. Um, she takes two auto hits with her pistol. And then I have one shot left, which is on a three, because of the death strain, which hits. And is strength six, wounds on a five or six. Roll six. She'll do six mortals to it. Oof. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know, why, don't know why I pass it to you. Doesn't Good old thing. mark of the incomparable hunter going off. Just roll some sixes. Um, initial battle focus. Get a bunch of automatic wounds. One whole inch. Battle focus. And then we'll go ahead and do that's these homeboys. Shining Spears actually have no one in range of their laser lances, but they have their cannon, which they can shoot at this guy, and their catapults they can shoot at a variety of people. I think they'll shoot. Uh, 
So you're closer. Closer. Sure. So the cannon will go into the metal scepter, and the catapults will go into the narrow throat. Uh, cannon for the metal scepter. It's on force. That's a bad job. And then catapults into the narrow throat. It's on threes. Does a better job. Two auto wounds. It's on fives. Four saves. Uh, three hits. Blink, blink. Uh, take two. Okay. And a uh, four. Sounds great. And then Falharoff will go ahead and shoot. That's back to me. He'll shoot at the Metal Scepter with his four shots that I conveniently have here. Uh, he will miss with all of them because of the nets. Bad job, Falharoff. But I think he will stick around to charge. Uh, and then we'll do some shooting over here. This Night Spinner will shoot those Power Horse. Uh, big Cannon. Shoots eight shots. Hitting on fours, hitting on threes, AP2. Great, right, so these are light covers, you're right? So, uh, four ups. Good damage. Good damage. And then a cannon hits three times, moves three times, AP1. Okay, um, AP1 will be three ups. Neat. And then we have the other Night Spinner doing the same dealio. Main cannon. Shoot three shots. I guess I'll pay a CP and reroll. I do believe I reroll both dice. I think is the way this works. Yep. Um, you would only seven seven roll shots. one if it was a single D6 shot weapon, and but it's. If it was two D6 single D shot, so three, shot weapon, but it's a single two D6 shot weapon, so you reroll all of the dice in that single roll. Each. Two damage each. And then next guy I'll take two. Eight. And then we have a uh, cannon. Which hits once. And wounds once, AP1. Okay. Um, three up. Eight. That's what we got and there. And you, uh, you took your CP off, right? You're at four. Eight, the four. Yep. Uh, then we have some other shooting. It is these Wind Riders. I think they're going to actually shoot all their shots on these Pyrohors. I okay. think I need help into the Mal Scepter. Famous last words. Interesting. Uh, yeah, so, so the fact the that C-Mob had rerolled in here means he doesn't have an interrupt available. The okay. Shining Spear Exarch does not have Kane's Lance, which oftentimes you'll see in order to are rerolling ones uh, force twos. a fight last and things that are charges. So it looks like right now we're looking, we're trying to get the Shining Spear yeah, Exarch into the Malice Scepter to get the those laser lances to bear. And then Behareth is going to try to kill the Norothrop, which is possible. But Seamob doesn't have the CP to punish anything like that. So these will be five ups. Mm -hmm. uh, B, four, five, six, five. Yeah, that will kill them. Eight. And then they will fire and fade. But I do, uh, I do think that this is the right call. Focus firing on those pyrovores. The pyrovores are the most imminent threat to objective two on the Tyranid side right now. These Maloceptors can damage it, but they can't go through the walls. It's difficult for them to get in there. So assuming that uh, you can ensure that there's nothing threatening there, you can you can be relatively safe. Feel relatively safe. I'm a little worried about the Windrider. Uh, these Windriders hanging out over here. I think they're... They get shot by an Exocrin pretty hard. Yeah, it looks a little bit safer. Yeah, we are worried about the wing type tyrant right now. It can't just hop over this wall with a big advance roll and get into the Farseer and just clean it. Okay, losing the Farseer, uh, this is the Doom, the Doom Farseer. Losing that this early would be very bad. Uh, we'll start with this Fanny's Spear Squad charging these two homeboys. It looks like a six. Uh, they're going to both. Yep, they're going to both. Uh, elite. Go. 
Negative 10. Those great. And then that saves the charge strands of fate dice to auto pass Beharis charge. Sure can, they can but it'd have been a little bit awkward if we forced a reroll here. <laughs> Prospero did spend a lot of CP this yeah, turn. But we're also going to. Uh, potentially... Did you CP a double one or no? I, I, no, I don't think so. They just, they think they just straight roll the 10. Nice. I think he spawned two dice and then rolled it. See, Bob looks like having some connection yeah, issues right now. Around. Hey. Not blowing me away with some options. And you'll go here. And then we'll pull her off, we'll charge the Nerf Rope. Yeah, so the downside of having no interrupt CP here is that you don't force the um you don't force the Tyranids to or you don't force the the Shining Spears to activate first to blank the interrupt off the Malice Scepter. Um, so Behareth can do can fight into the Neurothrope, leave, and then see how much damage he does, and that influences how many Shining Spears attack the Neurothrope. The Malicepter could interrupt. It's not blowing me away. What is it? Three attacks, right? Um, it's three or six. So oh, I guess you have one CP. It does not matter. Yeah. Uh, but you can't interrupt. So the bottom row. Punch yeah. into the Neurothrope. Get a big attack. Hitting on twos. One miss. No explosions. Just gone, I realize. And he is strength five in melee, which wins on fours for three saves. So we got a fail. Two, two out of three for the two damage each. That's correct. All right. Um, four now. Four at a time. Uh, so the next one. Fails one, so two, and then. Oof. Oh, Fails like two yeah. invulnerable saves. It's not like this. Go CP yeah. it. Force the Shining Spears to turn around. Or do we just take the loss? Oh, that's lucky. Oh, CP and Adios. fails? Are you kidding me? Oh Adios. my god. Go. That's unfortunate. Uh, yeah, that's not what you want. And he feels, I think, okay being somewhere over here, probably. Yikes, chat. Disaster, but... That's the way it goes. There is a there is a universe there where the uh, Neurothrope just doesn't take any damage from that. Then we have the Shining Spears, and they will pile in, I guess, to the sky. Three inches. I'm just going to move this warp circuit again. Thank you. Just end up right in space. Blammo. 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 I guess as far forward as possible. I don't think holding this middle is a realistic goal. Uh, they attack him. We have six laser lances. Hitting on threes. Spring six. Wounds on fives. Rerolling off of Doom, which I guess I don't even need for four saves. Save before. Um, okay, so four ups. Two damage each. So down to two. And then the Capitan with his six attacks. It's on threes, re-rolls everything from his cool sword, this is once, and strength four wins on uh, sixes, re-rolls everything from his cool sword. Oh, <laughs> Those are all deal mortal wounds. Oh, gross. Get wrecked, Malice Scepter. Well, that is unfortunate. So, last the Neurothrope, three Parvors, and the Malice Scepter. Gonna get some Shining Spears for it, but that is small consolation. Which is not super helpful because they are so close to being inside of Lemon Zone that they're not quite there. Uh, you actually head towards this guy. So you go through that direction. You go towards the high power. I actually don't know that you could get closer because you don't fly right now. So you go like two and then like one, and then you wouldn't really be closer. Yeah, so you have to stay where you are and then just keep this guy in coherency so you can go a maximum of there. And I guess you can go towards them and technically touch the point. Sure. Might as well make you kill him. This dude is gone. Don't think there's any morale to speak of. And we're done. We. All right. Well, that was pretty brutal, chat.
lost a lot of stuff, but it is the opportunity now for the uh, Tyranid reserves to come in. We do have a little bit of a spot here for Pyrovors to drop in and try to kill the Rangers, potentially, if they want to do so. And uh, we will probably pick up all of these Wind Riders. Um, depend the question is whether or not the wing type tyrant wants to push in really um, but I imagine between the hive tyrant uh, mortal wounds and the exocrine shooting I don't think these wind riders are gonna survive this maliceptor but we'll most likely pick up the shining spears as well but that's it feels like a lot of damage but we have to remember there's five additional units of shuriken can and shuriken catapult carriers in the Azuriani list. Yeah, pretty good rolls for sure. The uh, unfortunate part is that the Neurothrope, if the Neurothrope had blanked Beharith swings uh, on a 3 plus invuln, then it would have forced something here to attack into it. Pro either the Shining Spears or the Paragon Saber guy. And either one of those, uh, if they had split their attacks, probably doesn't kill this Maliceptor, and that's a huge deal. Uh, so I think, yeah, it's just really unfortunate for C-Mob. There's not much you can do there. There's a there's a very reasonable chance, you know, that the, that he he has a monster left in the middle of the table. Right, Gets we'll to swing back in the Shining Spears, time. clears them in melee, and then has this Malice up to here to chill, chill for a bit. Now, I envision that we get um, to a Neurothrope Imperative this turn, so we'll sort of cast, but we'll see. <laughs> Um, okay, so we'll give this mouse up to one. Um, no mouse up to don't think needs one. I'll just give this mouse up from the back one. Um, take out Catalyst for now. Uh, yeah, and then the reroll wants to hit, we'll go on to Fire Wars in the back. Um, yeah. Fire Wars are reroll wants to hit. Yeah, <laughs> they're the only, only core unit I can target, so. Uh, okay, movements. Maybe looking for a way we can uh, engage with the Hive Tyrant and uh, get back into line of sight blocking. This feels a little... I'm not sure if we can really do that, to be honest. Now, I imagine the intention here was to wall screen, but you can engage these spikes through the terrain, it looks like. May not take it if, it's, if the opportunity is given, though. Um, but yeah, the question here is like, are these Shining Spears will eat mortal wounds from the Maliceptors. Yeah, just like seeing if, I, if this plan is going to work. Uh, okay, um, looks, looks like it's doable, so I will try that. Which means that you basically yeah. take off the turn from psych yeah, casting Psychic Powers that. of the Maliceptors. Yeah. Maybe that's fine. So will, I might try to play a relatively Let's passive do. game for the, like big C -Mob. things on his front are kind of cosmetic, right? Oh, um, I mean, they're they're part of him, so they count. Like, does he have an issue with being too close to this wall where it phases through the wall? 
I was thinking I would be able to pile out of it. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't care about that. Sounds good. That's Trevi's good. word is all I all I need. Yeah. So because it's not used for measurement, it doesn't impede the model's placement when moving. Uh, oh, you're talking about whether it's possibly able to. Actually, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But it, they are still drawn for line of sight. So if he ends line sticking sight, through man. the wall, you can draw line of sight to him. Yeah. yeah. Like if his wing phases through the wall, you could shoot the wing. Yeah. Huh. I like, didn't you know, that. just as if it was phased, uh, you know, around the wall or whatever. Over yeah. it or anything. Yeah, it's it's not like so. Like if he like was right up against the wall and his claws like phased through the wall, you can shoot him through the wall because his claws phased through it. That seems crazy. Yeah. So just huh. just don't do that. Fair enough, don't do that. You got it. Yes, sir. The next one's going to come. And... Uh, it see. is, uh, it's dubious in the rules whether or not models intersecting terrain, restricting their positioning is supported as in the text. Um, there's, uh, there are rules that sort of dance around it, but never is it explicitly said. So it's a it is a a reasonable interpretation of the rules that a model itself does not restrict its movement, um, and especially while moving, it certainly doesn't. Uh, the most the cleanest interpretation of the rules is that they your your model does not does not restrict your physical placement. Uh, but obviously your phys your the totality of your model is still used for line of sight, so there are still disadvantages to trying to abuse that in face yeah, through walls and stuff. Um, which I think is uh, a fair way to do it. This guy might need to like, touch the wall or something. The big room for his buddy? Yeah. Uh, you want me to draw a line? One line of sight? So it looks like we may be like this. taking this gunfight down this angle. Now, I think don't know how i feel about this so we're taking we're taking we're trading shots here if both exagrins can poke out we can shoot one into the wind riders and kill a bunch of them and then blow up one blows up the tank um that feels pretty good but on the flip side uh it does mean that prospero now has this opportunity to push because eldar are so fast they can just reor reorient where their their aggression goes they can push to objective four and then just ignore the exocrines for the rest of the game. I guess they do have to, have to be worried about the exocrines pushing through the back end of this ruin a little bit, but that does feel a little, Not that I guess you need it, but a little passive, I guess, for the exocrines. But they can, they can do a bunch of damage this turn, and it looks it looks like I think what we're gonna try to do, yeah, is put the hive tyrant in the middle. We're gonna try to play as passively as possible from C mob. We're gonna put the hive tyrant in the middle, get a charge backwards, pile in, consolidate and get it back around the wall. There's still a potential it gets hit if the Eldar in advance this way, which they most likely will do anyway, but it does mean that they most they won't have as much firepower as they would normally, and they won't have quite as much support. And then they are most likely also get then get picked up by the Malice Scepter anyway. And that's if they don't get destroyed by an Exocrine. Okay, so I don't hate this plan from, from C-Mob. Not, not trying to push too hard, not trying to do too much damage. Just taking the the gunfight that he has with the with the exocrines and trying to keep his wing type tyrant alive. Now the danger the danger zone here is if this uh, wing type tyrant does not kill these shining spears. Uh, and we only have one command point for C mob to try to enforce it. It does have adrenal glands. Um. Actually, we might not have adrenal glands. Yeah, we do have adrenal glands in the wing type tyrant. So he can use uh, adrenaline surge to give plus D3 attacks. And the, the wing type tyrant does effectively full reroll. So it's not it's not a terrible. Or he, he hits on twos and rerolls ones. It could be uh, lightning fast reactions in handgun gun threes, which would be unfortunate. But into a five plus invulnerable save, it's always a little bit dicey. Doesn't look like uh, Prospero has any more any save dice in the bank, so that's lucky. But you still have to convert four attacks out of a six. It's a little dicey. Six and the Tyrant Talons, I guess. 
I do wonder if we'll see a thunderous impact here um, to uh, do mortal wounds on the charge as that one CP spend. One look like they can try to make you want to make a copy? Yes, that they can. Uh, I don't want to spend too much time on it. Okay. Um, Okay. Then I got a screen on this side. I think this guy comes back. This. Um. One like this, and then the other. Oh, uh, and I should. Sorry, I should be in a very. Um, I'm actually not doing an imperative again. Saving them up for the good, the good times later. I'm just gonna wait on it. Cool. Um, okay, and then an earth rope. Let me just get this as good as I can. Mm -hmm. And the white narco will advance and raise a banner. Does he want to be on this objective? Yeah, he does want to. Is he not now? There you go. Okay. Um, no trip. He's going to raise a banner. Bonaro. That's what we call him in Spain. <laughs> of course. I, I have heard that. I mean, even if it works, it can go there and shoot me, so it's probably just fine. From reserve, I know you count as having moved. I presume you count as having not moved more than half your movement, though. Unless there's something special. No, I think you, you count as moving your full distance. Okay, well, that's that something I guess. Yeah. Um, yes, I'll do that. Yeah, there's. I can use the strat uh, to count as. For being stationary, not, gotcha. Not doing that. Strategy. Um, all right. Just yeah, make sure the, the stratagem for extra guns actually counts as a branding station area. Okay, that's interact right here. With reserves. Hmm. Actually, yeah, maybe I'll get a narrow pierce, yeah. Maybe as well. Well, no, because not if I go to me, that would be bad. So, yeah, I'll just. Um, okay, yeah, I think we're good. And the five words are staying up. All right. Um, oh, no, it's actually psychic phase. Yeah, it only ignores uh, we'll cover, naturally. A, do a uh, more ritual in the middle. The so high, the high extra effectively gets the benefit of having room stationary, um, but it doesn't actually count as room stationary. Just to be, just to clarify. Uh, the that reason that's important is because you cannot count as remaining stationary um, after having uh, come out of strategic. I think reserve. that's more important. Mm. Yeah, I think it's more important than the extra can, so. Well. Mm -hmm. uh, 
Um, is there one for the next screen? Um, no, I'm gonna say go ahead. You can, yeah, go try to deny. That's a and five. That's good. I will attempt to deny. This guy has two casts, right? Two casts. Well, he, he can only do one because he's doing a. Fair enough. Like a yeah. I will attempt to deny. But blam. Oh wow! Fail. Look at that. Well, I want to try <laughs> sure, I'll attempt to be right? Yeah, that's funny. Oh, and he and fails again. again. No way, yeah. chat. So that's a five to cast the Sweet. warp ritual. Fails on both nice. denies at the four both times. <laughs> That's super good for Tyranids, actually. That then uh, uh, makes it a lot. They, because now they only have they have three turns to get one ritual towards the end of the game. Right. Can't see what that uh, so, like, gives them a lot of leeway, and especially if this Hive Tyrant can survive one more right. turn and there's uh, anything for it to do in the center of the table, it's going to be able to to dance in and out for a bit. Um, I guess we'll do the horror. extremely strong, and the Hive Tyrant yeah, could do its ritual and then overrun out of the center. If you gave, put anything for it to charge um, in the middle of the table, it got off. it for free, basically. Uh, cool. So that's okay. the Oh, we got the blue guys, the Wind Raiders. Wind Raiders are horrified. Minus two leadership, minus one combat attrition. Yeah, so that will be useful if we don't uh, kill them, which we, it's the unlikely you kill them with a single Exocrine shot. And we'll probably shoot them out of line of sight with this one Exocrine shot. This guy and do damage to Pings the Shining Spear. Yeah, I think there's a reasonable... There you go. Crazy. Yeah, there's a reasonable argument to pull the one in the middle because that makes the Hive Tyrants charge and pile in less, a little bit tougher. Very nice. It does mean that they, it's almost certainly dead to the Hive Tyrant charge. It's not really... Seema most likely does not have to spend too many resources on it. Pulling yourself out of coherency with things like damage and uh, morale checks is, I think, a skill that not enough people make use of in 40k. It can give you a lot of unintended benefits or unexpected benefits, especially once you force coherency checks on yourself uh, and you start pulling yourself out of melee and out of sticky situations or into situations where you start scoring. It's kind of a big deal. It's a lot of situations where you can string a unit really far, take casualties in your own turn, then coherency check yourself at your own turn to like put yourself in engagement off runs or something, which is pretty interesting. Yikes. One was very nice. Uh, I didn't see the other one. Yeah, this might be it here. Um, yeah, I think that's what CP is. Zero. Okay, we'll take the matter. Plus two. Um, that on this next thing here. So one extra um, grand coming in with the four plus invulnerable save. The other one having a catalyst. Um, okay. Not gonna know if there's Slider Smite. He's done. There's the banner. This guy's not gonna do anything. Alright, that's it for Psychic. Like, I'm one ahead on the things up there. Okay, it's actually shooting phase now. Sounds um, good, we? Yeah, so we'll shoot with the guy. Darren makes somebody else's first. And then to the Wind Riders. Sounds good. I will play um, quick. Okay. This is a f interesting move. Seven shots. Hmm. Seven shots. So if the other one fires into the tanks, it will be uh, they will be benefiting from Den's cover here. Winding on twos. So four dead. Yeah. AP at least four? AP four, three damage, yeah. One, two, yeah, three. just blitzes half that unit, and then they're gonna force a morale check now at minus six. Wind Riders only lead seven, so they have to they have to roll a one to pass and Prospero out of CP to auto pass. So that will potentially knock them below half if they don't roll that one and then force a 50-50 uh, morale check on the rest. Now that does give Prospero a throwaway unit he can use to score behind enemy lines, but 
that's a small consolation to losing what is what amounts to basically an entire Windrider brick to a single gunshot. Unless you ignore it. I do not, because I, I count as moving my full distance. Sounds good. Number of shots is seven. And then um, hitting on force. Yeah, only two hits there. That's unfortunate. This is a, it felt like a missequence. The Wind Riders were not benefiting from dense cover here. I think maybe it's a line of sight issue. The line of sight here is much easier to draw to the Night Spinner, but I don't think the advantage you get from not taking that sh the shot in that the opposite direction matters. So if this Exocrine had fired into the um, into the Wind Riders, it would have not been a, gotten that minus one to hit, and it would have converted a lot more highly. Uh, and here comes the high tyrant charge. So we need a big charge. Do we roll a 10? Oh, okay. Well. <laughs> Easy game. So what we're probably going to do is uh, try to then combat orbit around the Shining Spear Exarch and then go closer to the Wind Rider over here. Yeah, and that's going to get him uh, back to where, ba essentially where he was behind that wall. Uh, seems fine. All right. Yeah, so it'll go where that guy was. I guess I can turn my wings. Too. Well, I don't know if that'll help. And I'll stick you got ten, so you can you can do quite a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, maybe something like this. Bit of a long turn for C Mob, but he has done pretty significant damage to this elder army. We're we're. We're one night spinner healthier than I think we would uh, we would like. Oh, sure, for sure. Hope that the oh, Tyranids would be able to knock one down, but um, still uh, getting most of the Wind Riders without pushing too far forward. I think is very impressive. Uh, hit some twos. Play out. Those ones. Big hit here Hits for the twos. Hive Tyrant. Those ones. Look at that. Look at that reroll yeah, ones so coming in clutch there. Yeah. Those Maw Claws of Thyrax and just eats that really unit. Nom, 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 nom. Okay. And then fortunately for uh, the yeah, Tyranids, it does get plus one attack permanently to the Winged Tide Tyrant. The and there he goes. So not perfectly hidden. He's still going to be able to be seen from this angle. Uh, so I guess we didn't get too much there, but it does mean that the Wind Riders will have to push forward in order to attack him. And they do threaten, uh, it is 40 because they yeah, can auto advance six. So there is the potential that we see Wind Riders like push up here and take the shots at him. It depends on how highly Prospero values killing the Winged Hive Tyrant. It is a tough model to kill right now because it has... Um, uh, built in five of damage ignore, and we have seen Prospero fail to kill the. Oh, look at that chat! Oh, gross! Morale check dropping the Windriders down to a single model. Now that model is still extremely valuable to Prospero because of that behind enemy line score, but that is uh, that is a little unfortunate for him. Uh, it does look like we may have a spot. Oh no, I guess we don't have any five model deep strikers for the Eldar. But we have to worry about the Dire Avengers coming in now. So I imagine we start to see Dire Avengers popping in on this side of the table um, to deal with the objective four. We could even just drop two units of Dire Avengers in and just hope for the best. Um, C-Mob did show some restraint. We kept a unit of Pyrovores in reserve, and those guys can potentially clear out most of, if not all, of a unit of Dire Avengers on the swing back. We're basically going to be peace trading from here on out, I think, chat. Um... So it looks like Dire Avengers coming out of Deep Strike, so not restricted to the table edge, and we're just going to try to peek the shot into the Catalyst at Exocrine. Uh, take that the corner shot. But the question is how hard Prospero commits into Objective 4. I wonder if he will be uh, reticent to attack into anywhere he can't forewarn the pyrovores coming out of deep strike because each of those pyrovores firing 2d6 shots means the unit averages around 21 
Uh, winning on threes into a five-up save on the Dire Avengers is uh, pretty, pretty, pretty damaging. So if he can't kill one of those Pyrovores before it gets to shoot, he's probably going to lose most of the unit. How high will toughnesses be for Hive Tyrants and Swarmlord be like? Yeah, I imagine the Titans, the big Titanic stuff, probably goes to like 10 or 11, 12 maybe. Um, I, I envision a lot of stuff going to 8. Like, you know, the t stuff that's T7 currently may go to 8, and the stuff that's T8 may go to 9. I think it's going to be... It's going to be kind of a scaled change. Uh, like, the higher your toughness is, the higher it will get, because the, the impact is, is less. Like, going from toughness 9 to toughness 10 doesn't really actually functionally change too much. It changes your interaction with LAS cannons, and that's about it. Uh, whereas... Going from like toughness three to toughness four is a huge change, or toughness four to toughness five. So I think that will happen less often, but uh, and then we'll see maybe a couple changes in the like T six to eight range, and then the big changes will be the the high high or stuff that's already high toughness. Twenty-two. Their maximum move. Some within range. So it looks like we are going to the going for the hive tyrant. Now, here's the danger for C Mob, and I wonder if he wasn't quite uh, expecting the coherency pull of the guy in the center of that unit, um, because he could have uh, potentially gotten a slightly more effective charge if he had charged the guy in the middle. Uh, the C Mob has not used any of his synaptic imperatives. So he has the Maliceptor imperative active uh, available. He has the Neurothrope avail uh, imperative available. And he has the Hive Tyrant imperative available. Although, to be fair, that one probably isn't going to be useful to this matchup. Uh, but you have to have your Warlord on the table for those to do anything. And the Tyrant has to be C Mob's Warlord. So if Prospero can kill it right now, he actually leaves like two to three huge benefits. Um. He removes them from from C Mob's arsenal, and that's gonna be huge. Uh, but he's got to roll it up, and these these winged type tyrants with adaptive uh, adaptive biology can certainly randomly spike their saving throws. Uh, I did it earlier today. Had a hive tyrant with two wounds left survive five damage, and make a bunch of six up or a five up damage ignores and uh, just live through it. So it's not. It's not over for him. It also depends on how much, how many debuffs get cast. Um, taking a look at our strands of fate dice here, we have two threes and two fours. Hands together, let's pray for the hive tyrant living. <laughs> Kawaii spoons. I my hands, my my little gribbly rending claws are so firmly pressed together. I'm hoping that uh, that we see this guy live through this this shot here. If we do, uh, I think it's going to be pretty sweet. I think that's that's basically how Tyranids get out of this matchup. If we can blank a shooting phase on the invuln saves of one of these monsters, then and then get sort of a you know, a, 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 for lack of a better word, a double turn kind of interaction, then I think the Tyranids look pretty good. But if uh, the, if Prospero keeps sandpapering them like he has been, then it's going to be pretty tough. He is be deniable. There's nothing to do about that. Uh, question is, does she want to shoot a non-catalyst target? That might be a better use of her time. She goes 17. That'll be interesting. Because uh, she shoots a non-catalyst target. So it looks like we have two hit rolls available and two psychic tests. Uh, that's dangerous, unfortunately, for Tyranids. That means that we're going to be able to either get it so that the Farseers can um, cast from outside Shadow in the Warp and try to guarantee their Psychic Tests go off on big numbers uh, to get Doom and, and Guide off on the Wing Type Tyrant. Or they just make it so difficult to deny that we don't see that Doom get denied. If that Doom goes through, this Hive Tyrant's probably dead. But if we can deny the doom, it's going to be pretty good. Okay. 
able to do it quick and be nice, but that is not going to happen. So, Viper comes home right there. I will make a little copy of these guys. Right along the edge here. Boop. You could be on the point and prevent them from getting in there, so I think that's a good idea for you. A mount come down over here, they can come down only over here. And this knight spinner can finish off the job here. You fly over here. That should pretty much do it. Yeah, don't think they're going to be anywhere <laughs> over there. Every big. Uh, these rangers, so I guess our friends are a little surprised to be alive, but it's kind of fine. We have 14. Help out over here. You guys range into them if you need it. Directors will just back up. And already had you nine. Back up, make sure no one can get me there. And they will scout the enemy. Scout. Let's this warlock go and cast on this guy potentially. So he'll go and do that. This guy. This guy's the one that does not have an impulse save. Right yep, there. that's right. Grand. Now we have our parser over here going to advance. Going a big 13. Really just wants to get a set of 24 of anyone who can deny. It's like all the way over here. 13. Do you have trouble doing this? Not to get her. This one viper does not actually need to be around to screen, but yes, can help somehow. Can't really help. Shoot some shots at the side turn for these X screens. Very successful shots, I'm afraid. Let's bring this vital over to here. Be around. Can't leave with an 18. Let's try. With an 18 guy. Two shots. Might as well. Then it hit. Other Dire squad time. That's an interesting question. I don't know how much I care about that Metal Scepter. Could kind of practically drop one squad back here just to have for anti high tyrant measures. I think that's probably a wise choice. <laughs> like that future proofing a little bit in case that high tyrant lives and kills every oh, single wind rider, <laughs> which is certainly a, po a, a, a potential. Nine. There's only nine wind riders in a unit and that type tyrant can make 10 attacks are uh, with a bunch of rerolls. If he doesn't die here, uh, he's going to kill a great swath of poor Eldari. Um, but then he will, he'll fortunately get picked up by Dire Avengers, who can then move on to the objective, which is a big deal. So I do think we're going to hold on to that one squad and have this one squad over here. Then it's three times or thematic time, I guess. Why to you? Like her, but she's good. Pull it back. There you go. And then this guy's gonna cast, and he's gonna you know do his thing. And this guy doesn't really care. I guess he can go somewhere. 
Full advance. See where it goes. Ten inches. My malceptors bring all the seers to the yard, and they're like your psychics better than ours. <laughs> Biotech, thanks for the resub. I guess you can stay on the point just in case. Well, I guess they can't come over here. Can't get in there. Get in there. No. Yeah, sure. He'll be there. Okie doke. Glad, uh, glad to hear you're releasing another hit single. I'm excited to hear it on the radio. Right there. On, uh, get it on AT20. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's magic. Uh, he has nothing because he's kind of useless here. But we have some other stuff. This part here will cast uh, Faithful Divergence. Lock me in with a CP. Do you want to deny? Well, I guess you can't be denied. Uh, it's like another inch. Yeah, another yeah. inch. And then she'll lock in a guide. To go off. Guide will pop onto, I think these Dire Avengers are the best use. And then we'll go into the danger zone and have this Warlock cast. Uh, and he will just cast a Protect Jinx. That will fail. And then we'll have this Farseer cast. And she will cast using an auto six. No Jinx is big. A that uh, Exocrine with without Dermic is. A two plus armor save. Five seven. It's off. She will um, sorry, one so that was, you guys need uh, getting rid of Doom here would be so big. Sure. Yeah, I think it's a CP. Again. Now, if this Malice Scepter has his aura up, it's actually a non-zero chance that these Wind Riders don't kill the Hive Tyrant. I was sort of assuming that we would get guide on them, but if we're going for the Exocrans, the Hive Tyrant may just do its thing. And that one will also go up on an eight. No more than nice. Sounds good. I'll pass it back to me. Um, this might lands into, I think, this Exocrine. Yep, this Exocrine right here. Or. And the Doom did get denied? Oh my god. That's enormous. If we're not rolling sixes here, these guys are going to be trying, just trying to fish for sixes on the Exocrans. Wow. Okay. No jinx, no doom. This is maybe the turn the Tyrant is needed. Okay. Um, I guess I have another deny then. Sorry, I thought it was this thing over here. Yeah, go for it. Um, you got a, what? An eight? An eight. That's correct. Does the mouse appear or something? Um, so I'm getting a little lag. Did that roll? No, I think you changed it to select all dice instead of roll all dice. Straight there you back. go. You're on the right thing now. If you click it, left click, I think it should roll. It does not roll. Okay, go. Now let me show you. There you go. Now it rolled. Uh, seven. Uh, okay. I still have that. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh, so it goes through for the three damage onto the X screen. Okay. Down to 12. And then it is shooty time. This guy cannot do anything of relevance. Uh, cool, cool. Let's shoot some stuff. Um, we'll start with our friendly guys that have no choices. So we'll do a. Uh, well, I can't put them out of range, but that's fine. Uh, we'll do a night spinner here into the high current. We have a big gun, flamo. Unfortunately, the high current couldn't get out of the last side here. Getting the indirect fire. This is the back night spinner or the front one? Front night spinner. Oh, okay, so I think it's minus one. Uh, oh, I'm not sure actually. Uh, well, let's find out. I think he can draw a line of sight to you. Ooh, I guess it close. uses your wings now? I don't really know how that works. It's my base. Um, so my base is like here. I think his wings is kind of through dense, but uh, yeah, go ahead and see what you think. I think oh, uh, I if I draw from his, his back dude, I, I think he's clear, although it, it unfortunately okay. travels under this road. Yeah, I think he's okay. clear. Sounds good. Uh, and I will delete this thing. Uh, and he needs to do a seven shot sitting on fours because he's wounded. Because it hall measures, it looks like we can we can trace the line of fire from the back edge here, which is a clean line of fire to the Hive Tyrant's wing. Is what it appears to me. Thank you. Uh, 
two, three, two, eight, eight. And we'll do this back night spinner, uh, who will shoot his cannon at the X-Grim, because he cannot shoot it at the Hive Tyrant, being out of range. And then his main gun of the Hive Tyrant. Uh, main gun of the Hive Tyrant will shoot 11 shots. He's angry. One, two, three, six, seven, eight. Hive Tyrant already taking four here. It's a little bit scary. And he will hit on threes. Okay. Oh, so right there. And fours for two saves. Maybe two. Okay, four ups. Oh, Eight. saves are not what we uh, needed here, chat. I've turned uh, already down three, seven, seven wounds. Down. And then we have the cannon. That's back to me. Uh, the cannon is at minus one because it's firing through the fence now. Uh, so it just gets one auto wound, which is AP3, onto this extra Okay, so that goes with the four up. Neat. Nice. Back to me. Uh, those are the two tanks. We'll do the Farseer, because there's not a lot else going on for her. So she'll shoot that guy with her pistol and take two auto hits. And then one more shot. Blammo. Hits on five. Strength six. Needs a three to wound, or sorry, five to wound, which will not go through. So she'll do four more wounds to that extra crane. All right, down to eight. Oh, and then she will bow. focus. Going absolutely five ham inches. today, Chance. Which is not super helpful. She could go two through here, so she'll just actually end up going this direction. And then we have other people shooting. It's a Viper shooting his catapult into the Exocrine and his cannon into the Hive Tyrant. The catapult into the Exocrine Blamo gets two auto wounds and two hits, and then needs eight or sixes to wound. Uh, so just two at AP3 onto the Exocrine. Damage one. Okay, so these are for us. There they. I'll put them into the box for you. Um, four ups on the blue side. That's good. You pass the goal. Me. Uh, and then into the high Pyrento. Uh, gets one miss. Trying to six. Needs five. Nothing. And then we have the Rangers for obvious reasons. Uh, and we uh, I guess we didn't uh and so found diffuse off this malice after chat. Um I don't think I did that. Yeah. Seamob has a token for that that he didn't place down and it did cast powers. That's bizarre actually. Because I think the Encephalic Diffusion would have been huge here. I think that would have saved him probably four wounds across those Knights Bitter shots. And they will spend one CP to Bladestorm. Okay. What does that do again? Uh, six is to hit explode. Alrighty. 33 shots. Blammo. And they have guides. They'll reroll everything that's not a six. Blammo. These guys miss. These guys explode. Oh boy. And auto wound. And then they're looking That's a pretty them. good roll right there, chat. So that well, many I guess it was okay. Which I think are six of saves. <laughs> Okay, sorry. So you got these are all AP four. So let's go straight through. Uh, they, I think they have a six of save, right? Two up, three up, four. Oh, so you got to six of save. Thank you. You know, not that I, you know, wouldn't mind doing five Look more damage. Look at that! Oh, awesome, good. good roll. Uh, and then five up against the Dire Avengers. Like three more, three, so he is six, barely seven. bracketed. Or not quite bracketed, actually. Cool. All right. And then we will solid, do... Solid. Solid showing from the Exocrine. An interesting situation. <laughs> yeah, we basically have Jones two Windrider bricks to, to, to roll with. And... Uh, Let's get this... Wow, right there. Down. And three targets we have to remove. Uh, none of which are debuffed. And we have no rerolls here. So they're going to split... I'm going to delete some of these other guys because they're using me. Delete this, which we don't need. Delete this, which we don't need. Delete this, which we don't need. Uh, so Red Squad will split everyone who can fire at the Hive Tyrant without a minus one, which is one, two, three, four, five guys, I think. These five right here. At him. And then the other four will shoot at the Exocrine with the Impulse Save. Yeah, I think they can all see. Yeah, because uh, yeah, I think it's to the base, right? Oh yeah, oh, you're measuring last night. I see. Yeah, you're you're right. looking at the dance, but yeah, yeah, I was just making sure you're safe. Yep. All right. So we have uh, 
So I think, five guys. I think we have we have this is red or green we're, sh we're shooting with right now. Red right now. Okay, because I think this guy is gonna suffer dents, right? Firing at the hive tyrant. So uh, is it base to base or line of sight to base? Uh, it's base to base. You pick right, a point. Then, yes, yeah, you are correct. Base. I thought it was base, or I thought it was line of sight to base. That would be very strange. Uh, it would. So in that case, we have four shooting at him and five shooting at damage screen. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, okay. So <laughs> four shooting at him, one. To be fair. And some of the extra kernel will be dense, I think, right? But this is going to be weird. weird. This is going to be weird anyway. <laughs> oh, we got to roll three separate batches. So exocrine and dense, exocrine and not dense, hive terror and not dense. Amazing. So one save, AP3 under that exocrine. Okay, four up. One damage. And then four onto the hive terror. One, two, three, four. Flammo. These guys go away. These guys auto wound. And Flammo. Oh, these sixes, uh, these chats. Guys one. These guys are AP3. Uh, five. Okay, so three right of each. Right? Uh, six AP3s, two AP1s. Okay, they're all on the high turn, so they'll all be four ups. Does he not have a two up base save? No, he's oh, three. Rolled it out. Oh, yeah, he, he put them separately, it looks like. Um, so I fail three, and then. Hey, there's the adaptive biology coming back. So only one wound. Oh, the dream might be alive, chat. We got to do three uh, wounds. With these wind I rolled six dice there. Was that? Yes, they have six AP threes and two AP ones. Oh, two AP ones. Okay, sorry. Oh, yeah, there's still two the more uh, floating um, in from the fives. So these are four ups. And then one five up for this one. Oh, look at that. There you go. Easy piece. Uh, so it's All that's right. Plus one. One wound uh, from we'll the five do... wind riders, or the four wind riders. One guy. Let's shoot him. Flammo. Two hits. One wound. Our friend in uh, the, uh, in the behind enemy lines Good. saves it. Neat. Oh. And then I think. What we'll do we get, chats? This squad shoots. Looks like we'll have, have five. Fire, so we'll just shoot all the hive tarn, except for the two who can't. And we'll shoot at that x um, So they have two who cannot. They shoot at the x -crin. And they, I do think, are suffering a penalty. Yes, they are. And for dense, uh, it looks like you have like a couple who probably do, but some who don't. I think they. they that's definitely true. The, the two shooting at the extra definitely do suffer it. I'm just going to finish rolling them. So one wound on that extra screen. Okay, so it's uh, one of them. Okay, so that's a four up. See, it does damage. Uh, so I take one down to six. Running on to the hive tyrant, you're looking at the, I think it was these two guys are out. You're looking at one, two, red two, red. one, two, three, four, who don't suffer it, and one, two, Three who do. Okay. You good with that? Back to me. Oh, okay. I'll do the three who do separate. They separate a couple of times. And they force two saves. I'll just leave them here for now. Okay. And then we'll do with the one, two, three. Four who do not. Four, five, six, seven, eight. No, nine, there's two guys not shooting here, chat. Ooh, no one of them. That's no good. Um, that were oh, out of range of, of everyone. Well, there you go. All right, that many saves. They were all in range of the tyrant. So two guys uh, were. So oh, they, were, so saves, saves. they um, were all in range of the exocrine because they moved up to shoot the exocrine. Two were out of range on the exocrine, which is why uh, of the high tyrant, which is why we rolled them into the exocrine, and that's what did the, the, the two the damage here. Ooh. They were not all going to be in range of the tyrant, yeah, but, um, but this that's why they're not all shooting at it. I don't think. Oh yeah, I guess he might feel like it. Does he lash out? Oh, he does go down exactties. Ooh, that sucks. Oh, that looks back to me. That's unfortunate. Um, ah, the dream's Ahra, dead. I believe is the only man left to go. But we. Yeah, we could. I mean, Paharith might kill an extra Kren, but it seems okay. unlikely. But that does mean that we have two extra Krens alive. Uh, the Windriders had to move out instead of battle focusing. 
And they're kind of in the danger zone of a Malice Scepter now. So if we call New Earth Rip Imperative, although the, the Malice Scepter is being blocked. It doesn't look like it can get into range of anything, so it's going to blow up the Windrider and then call it a day, I think. That's unfortunate. But we may be able to pull most of these two units down, but that leaves the Dire Avengers. All right, four shots. And six wounds. Uh, one auto wound, he's strength six in shooting, so wounds on fives and sixes. Uh, so two wounds, AP two. Oh, okay, at the invul? Yep, at the invul, that's right. Yeah, if we'd seen, I think if we'd seen Encephalic Diffusion yeah, cast here that, that turn, uh, well, then we would have seen the Hive Tyrant survive. It would have meant, would have meant that all of these little attacks wound on sixes instead of fives, the ones that didn't automatically wound. And then the uh, Night Spinner would have wounded on fives. That actually would have been enormous. I think the Hive Tyrant would have been left with quite a few wounds left. One, we'll turn that to it. So we'll spend CP to try again. And land a seven. We're charging the one extra answer. Yep, that's correct. And the land right here. Within range. And All right. well, I think that's the only charge. We'll drop his six attacks. See what Beharith, see if Beharith can put two wounds in on the sex grand. Is, I'm hoping not. Wind, but I'll leave it out. Strength five, wounds on fives. Two wounds, two so you gotta fail two. both. Invuln saves. Yeah, it only one, fails one, so he's still alive. And then he will teleport away. Goodbye, Behareth. Think back to here is where he wants to be. Okay, no. Take six. On the will score conversion. I'll score bring it down for two for the high parent. If the enemy goes off, as it happened with Rangers, behind enemy lines will score three. Forty. Yep. So unfortunate there, chat. Uh, so I three. Almost, almost kept that tyrant alive. I think that uh, C mob was was playing, planning for it to be farther out of line of sight, but didn't quite, wasn't quite able to get there with the combat so movement. Um. But uh, it still took the entire Elmar, Eldar army to kill just that one model. It's a big loss. Obviously, having that guy still alive would be enormous right now. But. It is what it is. Okay, sounds good. Okay, um, and phase. Unfortunately, we see a little bit of the downside of Malice Scepters here. They can, they have the the potential to do a ton of damage, but it's all at, within that twelve inch range bubble, and uh, it's kind of within your opponent's power to control where they're able to deal the damage. So both of these Malice Scepters not being it, like sort of dead in the middle of the table. Means that C Mob doesn't have an enormous amount of counterattacks. Now, uh, he does, I believe, have an avenue where he can put down Pyrovores near to, to counteract these these Iron Avengers without them getting hit by uh, Forewarned. Since I don't know, I don't believe that these guys are close enough to the Farseer to use Forewarned. Uh, it is, if I remember correctly, a six inch range from a Farseer to uh, use it. Oh, excuse me, it is 12. So yeah, we do have forewarned available on all these guys. Yeah, that's okay. unfortunate. Oh, do I want to reach? So any any potential drop for Pyrovores here is in range. Um, we could make it so that they are in very slim range of the Dire Avengers themselves. So we could potentially drop uh, Pyrovores like here, for example. So only maybe three Dire Avengers can shoot them and then try to flame back because the Pyrovores have a much easier time drawing range to the Dire Avengers than they do to the Pyrovores. So we're going to spend our CP to try to regenerate this Exocran and try to get it back to mid. Two does not do it. We got two wins on a four. Yeah, still bottom. That's unfortunate. Uh, okay, movement phase. Alright, uh, this guy moves three now. Yeah. Um, so I'll move like 2.4 this way. Phase less than half his movement. Sounds reasonable. Um,. See if I can get these X. Is the uh, fire horse in here? Right, okay, so that's maybe a spot over there. 
I'll offer a, a general warning again, so you're not gotcha by um, ultimate Jake. The, the okay. skin. What's the range? It's like within 18 of uh, yeah, 18 you know? of the unit shooting, as long as they're within 12 of a parse here, and she's within 12 of. Uh, basically, the whole army at this point. So the yeah. whole army's camping out in this corner. Okay. That's one CP. Two CP. I wish. Um, very team I guess. Yeah. In the VFA. Uh, probably way to make it work. Um, uh, okay, this guy will move forward four inches. Nine inches. Um, and we'll just see. See if there's room for those guys back there. Maybe. Huh. Uh, in, in interest of the clock, I'll just point out this guy's here. Oh yeah, thank you. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, actually, that it won't matter because it's my own um, portage. Ah, true enough. Yeah. I think they do have to be within one inch of the edge of the board if it's your own board edge and you're ignoring the nine inches. But... That's right. Is, it, uh, is that by model or is that by units? That's a good question. I actually don't know. I will find out. We'll have a PDF rules. should know this, but I do not. That's a pretty niche situation. It doesn't come up a lot. I'm looking for reinforcements. Strategic reinforcements. Quickly. Forcing units. Strategic reserve, if that's what it is. Arriving from strategic reserve. Uh, yeah, strategic reserves, yeah. Okay. On aircraft, don't care about that. Okay, there's a section called like arriving from strategic reserves. Yeah. Um, Cannot be set up within nine inches of any model. The only exception to this is if every model in the unit is being set up within one inch of their own battlefield edge and wholly within their own deployment zone. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Um, so I can't do what I'm doing now. Okay, so I think what this means is. There's a lot of shots on me, though, if I do that. Alright, so I think this guy's gonna move a little more. I'll move his full. Experience dense terrain? Oh, oh, shameful. Say it again? I, I was just saying it's, it's shameful. He's gonna experience dense terrain. Yeah, I'll go this way, actually. The shame on his house. Okay, um, so yeah, then we'll see where these guys can fit in. So, okay, I also have this issue with this. Edge of this thing here. Actually, not even be able to get them all. You want to measure? Uh, so close. You can probably scooch a little bit closer here. Oops. Yeah, I might be able to. Okay. I think that'll do it. Yep, mm -hmm. that'll put me in range. Excellent. Oh, the tails. And you can just blast me with everything if I do that. I think so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Really missing some high fleet Kronos extended range right now. That'd be really nice. Yeah, this, this is a little bit unfortunate of an idi uh, an unfortunate idiosyncrasy of the matchup, I think, is that, okay. that Forewarn is just basically hard counters these 18-inch range uh, range attackers. Mm -hmm. The Eldar Mirror match must be wild. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think we'll just do that. Uh, but let me move my other stuff first. Um, yep. So I'm now sitting right here. Gonna come up. Um, so we have been 12 of the red guys. Ooh, we will get a uh, potential hit with the with the uh, psychic overload into them. That's a big deal. Um, this guy. Right, so this guy will just. Um, yeah, I guess I'll see We'll advance the fire bars in the back. It's moving and grooving. Um, yeah, so 10. So shoot 18, so 28 is their range. Boy. We can probably get some shots. Up on the other side, we'll advance. Four. He's gone. Ten. Come back to this guy. Um, now, sit there, we'll advance. Um, are these sticky objectives? I'm going to double check that. I don't think on this one. I think that's on um, the, uh, six objective ones. Yeah, I think you're right. Okay, that's not. I believe that's a death and zeal. Uh, I do think this one does have the thing where, I'll double check, where if you lose your warlord, you might not get CP. Oh, you're right, actually, yeah. So I might not get the CP. I think it's a roll now, though. What's the high turn of your warlord? Yeah, it's a four plus. Yeah, high turn is a warlord, so. Yeah, it's just a four uh, plus. That's... Yeah, I'll roll that right now. Yeah, that is that is fair. Uh, nope, so yeah, I can. Oh, so I, I'll just unheal the wounds that I gotcha. got. Okay, cool. Get, cool. Uh, good. get two. Unfortunate. All right. The extra downside That's of good. having the aggressive Hive Tyrant builds. Um, we'll do some psychic. I, if you hit the end of the move base, I will shoot. Oh, no, yeah, so you can uh, pop them with whatever I can. Spend both my TP and far away. Um, they have 33 shots. Yep. Oop, that's too many. Uh, Storm is not active, but Guide is active. Oh boy. And I think if we're winning on fives, we do want to roll everything. I my knowledge of how this works. These guys miss. These guys auto wounds. Those guys now need five. Uh, so you're looking at two AP2s and this many AP4s. Oof. Yeah, that might just... Um, uh, it doesn't quite peel the unit, but it's real close. Yeah, it doesn't matter what we're So AP2s will be five ups. So I've taken two, and then I'll roll these. Like 12 AP4s. Oh, this one guy left on one wound. Um, oh, boy. Oh, wow, well, that is unfortunate. Yeah, I think maybe yeah, that uh, triggering that forewarn there was was a bit of a mistake. Um, so we do get one pyrovore left to shoot back. Ooh. Yep, I take that. Excellent. Do you have to roll explosions for them? I think blade storm is just in the shooting phase. It doesn't persist. Well, I, I have to, um, my fire Oh, they explode. literally explode. I understand. <laughs> so we'll do the, the back guy closest to my uh, base now, and then the next guy in the middle. Yeah, could potentially wipe their own unit here. Neat. 
Because I guess they have little like fire bellies that could explode when they die. That's cute. Yeah, they're volatile. Okay. Um, great. Psychic phase. Um, we'll do a catalyst from the north rope. It's weird yeah. if it's not called explode. No objective. It's very strange. Uh, goes off on an eight. Put that on, I guess. Uh, I don't think I can. It's okay. Mm -mm. No. That doesn't seem that useful, to be honest. It's protecting two wounds is not super exciting. Uh, I'll go on. Yeah, there you go. Guys, I guess. Um. Yeah, that's fine. Um, he'll do. I guess he'll do a neuroparasite. Off on eight. Sounds good. Um, so I'll change to the red unit. So there's ten of those guys. Oh, I thought for it. Go for it. Uh, fives will be mortals. So four mortals on the red. Good. Put this guy. Put this guy. Um, okay. you pull me up there. Um, there's the horrors. Yeah, I'll we'll just do a horror from the mouse up to the middle. Cool. I don't think you rolled this die, but it will go off either way. There you go. Um, do you want to try to deny? Could deny. There is two spells off of him, and that's it that I can deny. So yes, I'll give it a shot. Okay. Oop, give it a shot. 679. We'll deny it. That will deny it. Um, all right. I guess he will smite. Oh, yeah, he will. Take the 10. Um, so yeah, unless you deny that guy, I'll just die. It'll be 1 plus 3. Uh, one minimum. Good. Anything else I can deny? I guess I could deny this, but she can try and deny, sure. So give it a shot. Okay. Roll. Take 7, but not deny, and that will kill him. Just kill that guy, yeah. Alright. Um... I don't think I'm... Oh, yeah, maybe I need to... Yeah, I guess I'll scream with this uh, other narrator up in the middle. Uh, he actually had the thing that didn't matter. Um, so yeah, screen goes off. That's an 11, or 12, actually. So, D3. Who's casting? This is the narrator up right here in the middle. Sounds good. And he went up on a 12. I don't think I, I can't deny a 12. Well, that's yeah, and it'll be two two mortals on the red guys. Two mortals on red boys. Um, sure. Kill this guy. Um, the second phase, we'll do a little shooting. I will do the... Turn two wounds into the red guys. So he will ignore the cover because he moved less than half. He sure did. Uh, number of shots is eight, five, six, seven, eight. Hit on five because he's on bottom bracket. Not too bad. And he'll move down two. Kill four. Oops. This guy specifically. Okay. 
Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll put one pair of blind toes, guys. Yep, sounds good. Um, number shots. Seven. Wounding on fours. A three. AP one. AP one makes me four up saves. Take the damage. Um, we'll do the one fire bore into the Dire Avengers. Number shots. Uh, seven again. All right, let's and see. Full conversion here, guys. So five on the Dire Avengers. Yeah, that's pretty good. That will kill the Exarch and a guy. It does uh, just turn on their ability to double tap, though. Um, Exarchan in front. We'll shoot the green red riders. Sounds um, good. Number shots. Seven. And this guy moved his full. Um, I don't think he'll take the minus one now, right? Yeah, because you can see at least yeah, one. Yeah, you can see at least one model. Yeah, he's good. Uh, too many days. Too many days. Five, seven. Um, so threes. Oh, look at I that! <laughs> oh boy. And then twos. That was a very good thing, yeah. Uh, so oh, five, two, man, this crackback has been pretty strong. Two, three. Killed five dire avengers in. Is that six, seven, thirteen wind riders? Can you fall back and shoot with the Avengers? Uh it's a one CV strategy on them. Dude, okay. Um, Yeah, it has killed a lot. Yeah, we'll just try to the fact the that we don't really have answers for the Dire Avengers anymore, I think, is gonna um, become problematic. But certainly, the attritional uh, game plan and game plan has uh, worked out so far. That is. Yeah, an engagement here would be sweet. Can't quite take the objective, but can at least uh, force the Eldar to fight you on their side of the table. Yeah, so that will not do it. Okay. I will estimate where he was. Sorry about that. You're good? Something like that. Yeah, I think so. Uh, okay, that's my turn. I owe you some morale. The red squad of bikes. Oh, auto passes the the red and unit. The green squad of bikes. Jeez, well, that's bands. a bit of a uh, that's a bit of a rubbins there. No more wind riders down, and that does mean that the wind riders are gonna be able to score behind enemy lines pretty easily. So, I, as as big as that was, chat, I think the fact that the maliceptors have literally basically been able to not do almost any damage so far is really gonna hurt them. It's really really hurting them. Um, we needed a we needed a, a Maliceptor to get up in here and just blitz one of these Windriders down. And I think keeping this Maliceptor in the back so far so far back, I, I think you know, mostly to protect the back, the rear arrow throw, um, is really hurt, harming because we we weren't able to get it up to a position where it could then uh, it could not be screened out easily from hitting from affecting the other Windriders. Yeah, here comes a Dire Avenger squad, but it's not really going to be that useful. I could put it here, maybe? And uh, peek a shot at the Neurothrope, but that's going to be a tough one. Neurothrope is out in the open, actually. It's not character protected at all. You just shoot it wherever. Could just start dropping uh, Night Spinner shots into it and try and get a good rivet. You guys over here. Shoots over there. That, I guess, is two damage we have to do. That feels excessive. Um, doable. Might be able to shoot a fire roar. What fire can we see? It's going to be around this column. 
right there. Or, I guess we'll have our one Exarch be there. Uh, and then get a right up in there. And do that, I guess. Okay. Feels extremely excessive, but that's fine. Two damage is two damage, you know? They're T8, they're tough. Kind of pulls off. These Dire Avengers can take an advance. They're going a measly eight inches. Eight. Dropping in some cover. And you need to respect the man's personal space. And then we have Mr. Baharath who wants to get over here to help. And these Rangers who are pretty much going to keep doing their thing. Step up over the here. Yeah, we'll do the action again. And I don't think I need these giant bubbles anymore. Huzzah! <laughs> oh, bubbles gone. I guess we'll find down too. Uh, Mr. Oh, one more. Mr. Stay at home Viper will continue to stay at home. Lucky good boy. He's doing a great job back there. These guys want to go a little deeper. Night Spinner, go 12. Encroach. Uh, none of these guys are offset, correct? That is correct. This Red Squad could advance. And over here, because of personal space reasons. This character, I guess, could intervene into them. That'd be fine. I think it. Uh, but I don't have a lot of faith in his ability. He's got one wound. He's got like, you know, two attacks. The two attacks, it's on fives. <laughs> uh, I think these guys, I don't know, could do this. Nope, I don't think they could. So, red guys, it's you. You do. And I assume this guy cannot intervene. I guess, yeah, he definitely can't. I yeah. can. This guy right now is kind of too close. I'm sure it can be. You got it. Like yeah, that is unfortunate too. Good call. <laughs> so those guys will be contesting the objective. Okay, um, There's no upsec over here. Everyone else who wants to help out. Unfortunate. Star Avengers could drop it over here. Yikes. We're gonna work on that yeah, I think uh, especially with that four Warren shot, things kind of falling apart for the Tyranids now. I, I think I would have maybe liked to see the, the Power Boards just come in the back, um, and not eating the four Warren, but at least it ate two CP from the Eldar. But uh, that is small consolation. To the fact that the Eldar now have kind of free reign of the table. So I need to get guys out of the way first, so we'll start with this Warlock. Again, Boogie. And he will Boogie, I guess you could no, not actually the guy. So Boogie over here. I can this guy. Pretty much anywhere, but we'll get right there. Respectfully, where he's allowed to go. We have a light spinner. We go 16. And he touched this point. There seems to be no. Oops. Most movement. Alright, no, I don't think he can be on there. Maybe state. State 2. Oh, don't do that. Oh, God. It's gone forever. Uh, huh. 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 Um, undo, you know? right, undo button. Uh, he's leaving the road. What a good call. State. There we go. Three. All right. Looks like we got a little jet engine in there. Back. <laughs> what a bad job I'm doing. 
Thank you, Treppy. <laughs> uh, okay. And then we have these jet bikes. Here's that is one. a downside of the cosmetic additions to the map, for sure. Sometimes you just got to get rid of them for the uh, um, for the objectives. Uh, these guys are using my 13 advance. That is 13 for them. And then they just want to make sure they have Sites. Boom. On to Mr. Extrapin over here. Mm -hmm. And then we can put a Viper out over here. We have 16 and absorb some smite action. Uh, we would like to be outside of deny range with her. But then who does she guide? I guess those dudes. There's a way to get two power wars to shoot yeah, and only forewarn by three models. There. Right there, so she's um there. That would have been extremely there. difficult. I'm not yes. I'm not sure that that's how the I mean, that that's how math works. Right there. Three, that's a twenty-four. And then Operation More Loon Bars here. I'm gonna put you within 18 because you have to be to shoot those guys. Put around with your friends over here. The the and issue with that movement is that the pyrovores all had to be within one inch of the table edge. Um, so, kind of by definition, the back one, the sec, the first one would have had to be like. Fourteen inches or so away, like four inches closer than the bad, the second one, which put the uh, almost the entire uh, dire measure unit in range to shoot. So I think it like you could limit the amount of uh, forewarned the the amount of shooting that had to uh, come in out of the dire avengers. Um, but in, by doing so, you would only get one power board to shoot anyway. him but he's going to do some damage either way so i would just want to be in a place where a mouse could not touch this and engage me looks like it's, it isn't going to be an issue yep sounds great um and we'll do a little shooting cool i think that is that do some magic magic I'll start with some magic off of this guy. He will attempt a quick and restrain for five, six, seven, which does. Yep, he's not within. Oh, he is within range. Goes does not go off because he needs a. What does it need? Does need a six. All right, so it does go off on a six. Do you want to deny? Um. Yeah, I will try. I'll do it with the mouse scepter. My... Yeah, it could have limited the incoming shots for sure, champ. Uh, I just think it probably seem up. Probably so didn't want to spend just the physical time to do it. Because he is he's a little bench. bit low on clock right now. Okay. Unfortunately, it looks like he's having connection issues today. It's got a little spiky all over the place on his ping. That goes off. Shield drop guide on two. I suppose. Probably should have done this reverse order. Where's the first seed? Uh, this Farsi right here should be at right range. Uh, range. Okay, yeah. I'm going to do these guys. I should have done this in the other order. And then she'll cast Faithful Divergence. Which let's go off. To the day. We give her 2 CP. And use that stratagem that we never see. Uh, and then we have these guys who are super in deny range. We'll start with this Warlock. We just talking out of Smite. Goes mm -hmm. off on a 9, down to an 8, I assume. Yes, down to an 8. Yep. Okay, I'm trying to deny with my Nerd from the center. Sounds great. Um, what goes up? Seems oh, good. Sorry, what, what spell was that? It was Smite. Okay, cool. It's the Exocrine. It's in for three more wounds. The Smites have been on fire, do One, two, three. And then the Farseer will go, and she will cast Doom. I, I rolled this D3, which fails. I don't want to spend any of my CP, so I'll let it fail. And then she'll cast uh, Executioner, which also fails. And then we'll do shooting. That's all of our second. 
will do folks who do not have options. Which I suppose is these back dire ventures. And they shoot that Exocrine right in the base. And I guess the Exarch will split his guns off and shoot that fire floor. Alright, Exarch real quick. Flammo. The miss, it's not a wound. The auto wound just killed him actually. Uh, wait, let me see if he blows up. Oh yeah, because you can do that. Exciting. No, he's good. He's chilling. And then we'll do these guys. They have some choices. They will split their shots. And they will shoot... I think half their shots. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of them with no Exarch. A little boot. Well, I guess I, I don't know why I'm sleeping half. The rest of these guys are uh, There are some of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, they hit on threes. Sixes are cool. Want to do their bad. And then they wound on sixes. So we're looking at uh, eight AP4s onto that front exocrine, which I think is the one with the invul save. Maybe not. Uh, no, the front one does not have the invul. So uh, eight AP4s. So there is. AP4s. Perkisaurus, thanks for the follow. Yeah. Uh, that is enough to kill him. Does he lash out? He does not. And then we will do the... So one, the first extra grin finally goes down. It looks like the second extra grin is, is quickly to follow. And I think it it just becomes a question of whether or not the two Maliceptors can, can fight their way out. Now, unfortunately... One of them's kind of tied to the back here, so I think one of them has to go back and kill these Dire Avengers and hold down Objective 4. The other one can push forward. Fortunately, it's not screened currently, but that could change. But uh, CMOB is also still only scoring a 4-point primary. And with Prospero holding up a 12-point primary on round 5, I think that maybe Curtains... Um, we are going to get a lot of points on no prisoners. Lost a couple because of morale checks, but uh, the <laughs> it was a little beneficial that uh, Prospero rolled so well on morale checks the last turn because those models are going to be scored for no prisoners uh, now. Yeah, so we will take the first five. Uh, sixes, next two, and then five of the fans on those three. Uh, Catalyst so coming in clutch one, here for the so Fire one Wars. More. Sixes. I mix one of those. Let me delete some dice. Uh, so he's taking one, and I have to take three Camel here. Again. Where are these guys? Um, so he's taken three so far, and he's, I've done nine rolls, so I'll take the last two. So will six ups, and then five ups. So he dies, and does he blow up? He does not. Okay. So uh, 11. Is that the right number? Is there more that are AP warm? 11 total, and he, I kind of lost track, did... Yeah, I rolled, he, he took all 11, yeah. Took all 11, good for him. Okay. And then, uh, he's practically out of range now. So we'll do this lady, do the Mal Scepter. She got her three shots, one will auto wound. The others hit on two. Yeah. Are you touching that screen or? Uh, yeah, I think she. Oh no, she's not. She was supposed to be. She just wants to shoot that guy. That's her her purpose. Yeah. Uh, I guess she doesn't necessarily need to do, but she, that was my attempt, so I'll, I'll leave her there. Um, uh, she does take more wounds to him. So great job. That's four, you said. Uh, six. 
six, okay. Down to nine. Yeah, this Kurnos bow, I think, has also been putting in insane work this game. Uh, I think that is its 16th mortal wound that it's dealt. It'll do the Exgrin. Not including Psyche oh, powers, obviously. I think uh, well the character itself is also smite, right smited right for uh, five or six. Alright, so one attempt to wound. Oh, we can't get it in anyway, so three saves on that extra screen from the warlock. Um they're at least one AP, right? Or no, they're at least two AP? Or what, three what's AP? Three. Three. Yeah, okay, so I take two so extra screen dice. Good job, warlock, I suppose. Just blow up. Neat. Bopper up is feeling awfully silly. I don't think he can shoot anyone anymore. What's happened? Uh, yeah, I don't think you can see anyone. I'll get rid of this thing. Uh, nope, I don't think you can see anyone. Uh, so we'll do some of these night spinners. We have this night spinner who will shoot its shots into the Maliceptor. Number of shot Roonies. Is six. Mm -hmm. uh, hitting on. Are you the wounded one? You are. Hitting on fours. And we'll get one auto wound. Like this as well. And wounding on fives. We get three saves. Maybe two. Are the shurikens? These are the uh, Doom Weaver shots. Okay, do those auto wound too? On sixes? Nope, they don't. I use an auto wound dice to auto. Oh, dice. Ah, I see, I see. Okay. So you have three ones? Wounds, yep. All right, four ups. Uh, take four damage. And then shoot the shuriken, which which does auto wound and misses one. An auto wound fight for two more AP3. Okay, uh, four ups. Did I notice? Neat. And then I guess we'll shoot these guys at the fire wars. Uh, there are one, two, three, four of them. Mm -hmm. We have threes, we're rolling ones because they're on an objective and they're mad about it. One auto wound. And they do a bad job. One AP, three, two AP ones. Okay, AP ones will be four ups. And AP three will be a six up. Nope, so it takes three. Answer two. Eight. And then we have, um... Oh, sorry, um, I have to roll the other things. Oh, yes, yes, you do. Uh, sorry, he actually only takes one, so he's at four. Sounds good. Uh, I'll have the Viper shoot him. I guess the Viper will split off his... Can I pull this guy with two a face save? Doesn't. I guess we'll pull off. Uh, we'll do the Night Spinner, which will shoot him. Wait. With the big gun. 10 shots, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Flammo. Couple of misses. Flammo. Couple of fail wounds. Two wounds, AP2 onto him. Okay, uh, 5 ups. Mm -hmm. Close it. Dark and cannon. One auto wound, AP3. Guys miss. What's up? Damage 2. 2, um, 5 ups. It's 1, it's 2, 3. Uh, and then we'll shoot him with this Viper now. Uh, the laser. Couple misses. Three wounds, no AP. Yep. One damage. Five up. Takes one. And then the catapult. One auto wound. Uh, so two wounds there, AP three. Yeah, six ups. Is there a one each? Damage one. So five ups. Uh, takes two, so he dies. Does he blow up? He does not. Neat. 
And then the very last is going to be these Wind Riders, who drop their shots in the Metal Scepter. Yep. Sorry, the green Wind Riders, is that? The red ones. Oh, the red ones, yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, they miss a bunch, and then they don't want. And then uh, these guys shoot all their shots in that Metal Scepter. Yep. They have 33 of them. This is like a kind of stop, stop, he's already dead moment, I feel like. <laughs> we do have two Malice Scepters remaining for the Tyranids. That was pretty brutal. Both Exocrines down, all the Pyrophores down. Uh, and literally just four models remaining versus the majority of an Eldar army. Uh, not sure that Seamob has what it takes here. We can uh, Ooh, here comes the Neurothrope coming with the Heroic Intervention. So, got some types of Ah, misses. Sad. Okay. Got you. I punch you back with my dude. Yeah, oh, kind of important there. If it, we'd killed hit. that guy, would have preserved the banner, but that even drops this banner. And so, Seamob's yeah. only getting one on banners now. Right. Oh, um, because this is not uh, the objective secured Narrowthrope. No, this is the right. Resonance Barb Narrowthrope. Yeah, uh, that's unfortunate. Really, uh, an important thing to keep in mind against these Wind Riders is that they always they have so many mo individual I think it's four it is, yeah. fast models. And bring it down for another six points. Get up the end here for two. Behind any line for three. Over to you. Uh, All right. I'm good to do with whatever you want to do. Uh, I'll open discussion if you want to talk out at this point, or if yeah, you want um, to play through, that's fine with me as well. Yeah, I'm happy to talk out. Um, yeah, I might get a concession. Yeah, there. I'm going to try to uh, try to do my last warp ritual in the middle here. Yep, I think that will yeah, be very did easy. move up the, uh, um, the Neurothrope to warp ritual yeah, last turn. That was a good, uh, a good plan ahead there from C-Mob. Um, I guess, I guess I'll open everything else. <laughs> sure. Yeah, can't be stopped. Yeah. Uh, so you finish that out. And I think it. I moment. think it was largely the fact that the, we saw this hive tyrant go down that, that turn. I think if we had encephalic diffusion, that malice up here on the hive tyrant. Um, well, I guess, uh, beginning my turn, I would get one banner. It would have. Uh, that would have been a, big, yeah, I think a pretty big deal. I think it would have survived that shooting phase, and then you get a hive tyrant to pick up one of these wind rider squads and uh, prevent like these bo blocking movements. Right. From happening so as easily, um, yeah. and, then this guy down, try and then I think obviously the the hive turn then pulls focus from the exocrines. The exocrines take less damage than uh, the subsequent turn, and yeah. I think the game flips Maybe around quite a bit. Uh, Plus, you have a an imperative to play with that turn, whether it's uh, yeah, being able to diffuse yeah. and perform actions yeah. with the malice scepters, so you yeah, get an extra the the overload side, trigger, or. It's plus one to cast, so you get more overload triggers. So, what are we doing right now? <laughs> All right, there it is. So you will finish off your warp ritual. You will kill 11, 6, 7, or 11, 10, 11, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 more guys. Well, GG chat, and that's going to be Prospero taking this one down with Eldari. Was pulling for the Tyranids. They did. Uh, they made a good showing of themselves, but I think that the Malice Scepter is a little bit too clunky against the uh, speed of Eldari. They're able to sort of hem in the Malice Scepters, take very minimal damage from their Psychic Overloads, and then punch them back in a big, huge way. And that is, I think, a downside of Malice Scepters. I don't love the Malice Scepter uh, in Tyranids right now. I think that kind of demonstrates the weakness of the chassis. Scout the enemy just finishes up at 10. 100 lines at 12. Sounds good. And then my last turn, uh, will you take this objective from me next turn? The This corner one? I no, I will not. You will hold that again. Let me hold that. You have a right And then you get your banner on it, presumably. This, one's banner. Banner. this one has a banner on it still, yeah. Yep. So um, yeah, I guess we... Uh, yep, 4-1. Yep, that looks good to me. Sounds good. Ooh. I might uh, I might lose a point on my last turn for not controlling my whole objective. Yeah, I probably would. Uh, I forgot about that part. The meme. Yep. So I'll be like that. Uh, cool. 69. That's right, good game, my friend. That is the secret yep, good game. secondary objective. Well played. Uh, likewise. You did very well. I think, uh, I think it's a tough matchup for you. I think it's very tough. Yeah, this matchup is real bad for... Uh, I mean, yeah, against, a, against an elder player who knows what they're doing, it's very... 
If anybody has any questions for the players, go ahead and throw them in the way. Uh, the auto winning on sixes is just really tough because you, you pay a lot of points to be T8, I think. Yeah, um, yeah, I think that's one thing, and then it's just the mobility. Like you can you can basically put your whole army anywhere, um, and uh, I'm just too slow to to counter it. Too slow. Um, just, uh, just tiered at things. Yeah, I had a uh, um, a question, especially the, the the turn that the high tyrant went in. Um, yeah. I think if the <laughs> if the malice scepter had encephalically diffused on it. Right? Yeah. I, 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 it's it like super doesn't die, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. right. I, I sometimes yeah. I just forget about encephalic confusion, which is oh, funny. Oh, sure. That's like what mouse are. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's like their whole thing. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. I think it would have it would have saved like four night spinner shots and like five oh, wind yeah. ride like it's a shuriken shots. Yeah, that's taking so much less damage. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah, everything goes to minus one to boom, basically. Uh, yeah. Um, the scatter really lasers don't. I think sure, everything um, else gets hit. Your auto, your auto hits don't uh, go away, but yeah, that, that would make a big right. Sense. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but it, it was yeah, uh, it. most of the yeah, almost all of the all, all the AP one hits you took, which is like five or six. Yeah, um, yep. would have would have disappeared, and then a bunch of the night spinner hits. Yeah, I probably yeah. wouldn't even try. Frankly, I'd shoot the extra crimson and give up on him. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and then obviously having a hive tyrant alive is a big deal. Then you uh, get an imperative. Right. Those are nice. Yeah, I didn't even use any imperative. Yeah. <laughs> Cool. Well, cool. thanks, guys. Uh, Prospero, congratulations on taking it down. And uh, thanks to both of you. Thank yeah, you for the treat. Awesome. Well, have a good one, guys. Right. I'll go ahead you and uh, put your scores in so you should be all set. All right. Cool. Have a good night, my friends. Yep. See you guys. Cheers. Cheers. All right, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. A uh, bit of an unfortunate end there uh, for CMob. Uh, but yeah, I think this is a tough matchup for for him. Uh, the forewarned was unfortunate. It was an unforewarned play. Um, and I think I mean I just I'm not sure how you get out of that. I think that as soon as you put those pyrovores in strategic reserve, uh, they're not super fast, and Prospero is gonna set up to forewarn anywhere they come in. Uh, I think it was just the, the nail in the coffin for them was it just that it was this one idiot who was screening their the perfect drop where they could have shot a bunch of guys at the Dire Avengers without really being threatened very much by the other units. So uh, that was a little bit unfortunate. He couldn't have held it another turn. And he was being screened out on this side. So he couldn't have come in uh, in the back that turn. So like the other option is to like come in behind this wall or in this corner and do nothing for a turn. Which is probably the right call potentially, but you know you don't. You hope you can, I think at that point you just hope that the the CP expenditure is gonna ruin your opponent enough uh, financially that they uh, aren't able to to fuel their aggression for the next turn because that is a fire and fade they lose. But I think they were so far ahead at that point that you needed to deal crippling damage to their army and didn't quite have the beef. Get out of here, Volibear. Well, that was a great joke. Um, all right, chat, thanks for coming and hanging out with me. I'm going to be live tomorrow with Tactical Tuesday. I think we're going to talk about Data Slate stuff. Uh, we're going to maybe do some wish list about Data Slate. There weren't any events this past weekend, so we're not going to do normal Tactical Tuesday stuff. There were like a couple. We can. It, they were almost entirely won by Astra Militarum and randomly Heretic Astartes, which was interesting. Um, so we can talk a little bit about that and then talk about data slate things. Wednesday, uh, I have a game scheduled that's going to be against Grey Knights with the high, with the Tyrant Guard. I'm excited to, to see how that game ends up. I think it's really bad <laughs> because the Strike Marines really clear Tyrant Guard super fast, but it might be okay. Who knows? Uh, and then, um, yeah, later on in the week, I'll, I'll, we have a, it looks like a pod finals just got scheduled Friday. So we're going to have a game on Friday and then uh, Thursday I'll, I'll figure something to do. So we will be streaming all week. Um, so yeah, stay tuned to the Discord for more announcements, and let's go raiding! Take a quick look here. Who's who's doing Warhammer? Um, Protuck is doing something. We'll raid them. We'll see how it goes. Uh, alright everyone. We'll hang out with Crotuck. Looks like they're 3D printing, which is kind of cool. And uh, I will see you on Tactical Tuesday on the YouTube channel tomorrow. Cheers.